of a five thousand dollar off. Oh yeah. Ranger Ramon. We can't hear anything right now. Can you guys hear us? Can you guys hear us? Well, there's nobody on to hear. There's us. nobody else to hear us. Hold on, let me pull it up. <laughs> yeah. Settings. Road connect. Road connect. Road is open. Okay, first off, your microphone dropped out, Tony. Okay, first off, your microphone dropped out. All right, we're good. Okay, but your mic is still dropped out. And it's saying. probably because he pulled it tight and unplugged it. Your mic is still dropped out. And it's probably because he pulled it tight and unplugged it. There it is. Why is the system shit? What's going on there? I don't know. Well, we don't have any system audio. We don't have audio. any system audio. So, I don't know. so that's why. Well, we don't have any system audio. Well, yeah. Well, but we did have system audio. We normally do. If we would, like, for normal. If we want to play, like, a video. Yeah, from, yeah if we like, did. The Weber or yeah. I mean, so we don't really. I mean, we Hi. don't need it. We don't need it, right? Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Hello. We got two people online. Hi. Uh, hello. We got two people online. Um, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you do. So, um, welcome to Bass and Be Ready tonight. It's another episode of Friday Night Shenanigans. Episode sixty nine. Who would episode sixty nine. Who would have thought? Giggity. Uh, just like Tony said. Oh. Um, dude, I just can't get over having episode sixty nines. It's just the best number that's ever been made. It is a pretty good number. And um, awesome. Phoebe knows she likes episode 69. Wow. Ah, she is here for the party. Wow. The 69 um, party. Wow. Damn. So, I'm just trying to, uh, I don't know. I like. I feel weird. I feel like I don't hear what I'm supposed to hear right now. It sounds weird. It sounds fine to me. It sounds fine? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just drank too many beers before we got started. Um, I don't know if you guys know who this dude is, but this is Tom over. Uh, Tom Tom joined us on the show tonight. Tom just tied uh, Maryland State record. 27 years for a rock bass. Was it 27? I thought it was 30 years. 27 years for a rock bass. One, what, one pound? One pound even. One pound even. 10.5 inches. One pound even. The fish or massive fish. I mean, <laughs> when he sent me the picture, you know, I kind of compared. You have to turn your phone yeah. sideways when you look at the picture. Somewhere around ten and a half. So we have Tom on the show, and we're gonna get into the juice of what Tom was doing that day. Um, fishing. Why Tom keeps fishing when in the sub in the sub freezing temperatures? Um, what is wrong with you? It was pretty nasty that day too. And it was nasty that day. I couldn't believe when I got that text, the text message from you that you were out. It was raining, snowing, sleeting. It was, it was a not. A little bit of everything. I'm gonna take this off. Of this. At least the wind wasn't blowing that day, though. There was no wind. Yeah. <laughs> was that on a Saturday? When you're gonna talk well, Sunday. Uh, talk right into the mic. I believe it was on a Sunday because. I think it was a Saturday morning. Right was it Saturday morning? I because I definitely because I saw you putting out a job of town. I was coming here from duck hunting one well, day. Then that wasn't that day. Oh, it wasn't. No. <laughs> that was not that day. Hold on, I will tell you. It was on January 6th, which it was. No, I was at Drill that weekend. Hey, Saturday. Was it Saturday? That was my... Ch I was thinking it was a Sunday because the, the other shop wasn't open. Oh, okay. Angler tools. That was my change of command day. Yeah, That's that what was, I was doing. I wasn't even going to go and fish that day. I think I got out there like 8 o'clock in the morning or something like that, and the rain was supposed to start at like 10 or 11. It was starting at like 9.30. <laughs> You're like, well, I'm already out here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was uh, not ideal. So, so what were you doing? You were you were out perch fishing, I'm assuming. Are we on the upper or the lower? On the lower side. On the lower yeah. side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He was an average. Yeah. 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 The non-title Perryville record is 1.3 pounds, so I wouldn't have had that. <laughs> I had. I, Where I is actually, that from? Does anyone know? So not you thinking were like about that. Marginally, like a pond uh, you were like marginally yeah. close to that area, though. I call it one in between Connell. title and non-title. I, I actually <laughs> caught one in Conowingo that may have been close to that and yeah. didn't just didn't, didn't know, it was 11 it. inches yeah dude I think yeah. so many people like while well, I was fishing on Deep Creek like two or three years ago my buddy Sean and he caught one that was humongous 
And we were just like, we didn't care because it was a rock bass. I knew exactly yeah, what it right, was. Whatever. I was like, I don't care about that yeah. thing. I and must then record. He looked up the state record. He's like, dude, the state record's only like a pound. And I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, we probably should have weighed that thing. I did the same. Like, I did the same thing when I caught that one on Connolly. Like I said, it was 11 inches. I mean, it was it was a, oh, it was 11 inches. It was a yeah, big. It was it was a big rock bass, but. You know, didn't I, I didn't have it? You know, we didn't have it. This was yeah. ten years ago. Didn't have a scale. You know, didn't have a scale with us or anything like that. I just laid it on the board. So, oh, 11 inch rock bass. It's the biggest rock bass I've ever. Thank caught. you, Miles. Um, and we. Uh, Thank you, Miles. We, you know, just chucked it back. I actually caught it on a half ounce jig. <laughs> Don't they technically <laughs> count in tournaments? No. I thought they were part of the black bass family. They're they're I, think, of, I, think, I, I think. I think. I think. I fixed there's, it. There's I added. Something. Hold on. I added another camera, and the camera always picks up our secondary audio. I think I just fixed it, though. Yeah, Miles said we're good. I freaking always do that shit. Every hey, time I add hey, the Chad. other camera, I forget to put it to a custom audio device. Is that why we can't hear anything? No. no. That's for sounds like this. Ding! Um, okay. So I... Yeah, I caught it on a half ounce of jig. <laughs> just, I was flipping a jig. I was actually in Pennsylvania, so I guess it wouldn't have counted for everyone. I so was, how does that work, I was though? in Muddy Creek. Whoa. I, I was in Muddy Creek. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Like, it would have been PA. If we you were, were past the threshold. We back in. Yeah, I mean, we were technically it is. But, like, still, like, the whole Maryland license counts in yeah. Pennsylvania. Well, it doesn't, it's but it doesn't count in. Does it, though? In, Not in Muddy in Creek, creeks, it doesn't. It doesn't count. Oh, really? Doesn't. Yes. So, okay. yeah, if you're in the Maryland Creeks, you have to have a Maryland license. If you're mm-hmm. in the Pennsylvania Creeks, you have to have a Pennsylvania license. But if you're on Main Lake, any. any, you're any to go to but Oakland. Main Lake doesn't count. In Main Lake, you're fine. As long as you don't go to the Creeks. I got you. Mm-hmm. The cutoff line is the mouth of the mouth of the creeks. Okay. So if you're if you're go, ever going into any of the creeks up there, um, whether you're in Pennsylvania or Maryland, you need the opposite. You know, you need whatever license for whatever creek, whatever state. The well, that's good in. to know. <laughs> Interesting. But yeah, I kind of always Lake, thought can, as soon as you crossed Pennsylvania's line, you had to have Pennsylvania license. So here, here's no a question: yeah, it's, The main lakes reciprocal. So what about the A rig? Can you use the five hooks in Maryland? No, Maryland's only two hooks. I think that's a different topic. Uh, no, you can't. Like so, up. so if you're in Pennsylvania waters mm-hmm. up there, you can use five hooks. Mm-hmm. If you're in Maryland waters, you can only use two. So mm-hmm. that on the lake is the dividing line. What the hell that's is a, that? That's not a. Oh, a koozie. Oh man, it's not a koozie. That's not a lake regulation. That's not a reciprocal regulation. That's a. It's a state tackle regulation. Mm, okay. So, like if you like in the. Um, like set locks tournaments, you, sure. you can throw five hooks as long as you're in Pennsylvania. Really? Yeah. I mean, I don't ever like when I'm throwing that thing. I'm up top anyway, so yeah. I don't ever throw it down there. But you should. Um, I know. I probably should. It, it's. I, I've had some some really really good days throwing an A rig on the bottom end. Why did I feel like that place just never like Too hit its stride? It place never hit its stride. I mean, there were some good tournaments, but like the big the best bag I had up there this year was like 16 pounds. Me and Kevin went out and I mean, practiced. Still a pretty good bag. Yeah, but like I mean, the, the twenty. I mean, Michael cracked him up there a couple of times, just not. In the yeah, 20s. but like the the twenties never really showed up. Like they now, granted, and I remember seeing on like in twenty twenty because I was away and I was looking at everyone's Facebook. Like every fucking Conor Wingo <laughs> tournament, Giggity. somebody was catching twenty two, twenty three pounds. So it was unreal. So the water never got clear Giggity. like it was that year. Um, well, the year that we had all those the big bags up there, Giggity. the water stayed really clear up top. Yeah, um, the water was cloudy all year. I mean, there were some good bags. Um, Mike Powers in my our club tournament at the end of October had 18, like 18, yeah. 18 and a half pounds. Throwing freaking swim baits? No. He, he caught one on a, a TK that didn't help him. Mm. It was like two and three quarters. It's amazing how that works. Yeah, Miles yeah. has a good point. The the 20-pound bags were largemouth or one or two smallmouth in the bag. It's because the water was dirty. Right. This past summer, it was dirtier than normal? Yeah. We didn't have hardly any rain. No, well, not, was, not in the summer. In the fall. summer, summer oh, fall. Fall. it was the fall when the big yeah. smallmouth. I mean, the big smallmouth are, are typically going to be like late October, early November, yeah. or you know, it's like mid November, and it, it was it was pretty dirty up there. Yeah. I will say the the largemouth fishery, the largemouth fishing up there has gotten quite a bit better every every year. It's always been um, good. Yeah, but it, it's really started to show. I mean, there was a lot of big fish weighed in this year. I've caught three twenty pound bags up there, and they've all been largemouth. I've never done that up there. The biggest bag I've ever. But they were had also in the like springtime. Pounds. I mean, it was yeah. during the during the close season, but I mean, the they springtime were, they were up there small. is freaking so much fun, dude. Dude, we caught. Oh yeah. Me and my me and my buddy Randy caught one year. Well, we caught so many so many big fish <laughs> one day. It, it was it, it was insane. They were spawning. They were spawning in Funk's Pond. And we went in and sight fished three four pounders. Mm. 
Um, we call it we I call it a four pound smallmouth outside of funks. Um, then we we were just started cranking and we we kind of figured out like a pre spawn you know, fish that had that weren't hadn't moved up yet, and right. we caught like three or four more four pounders. It was freaking insane. We went into Broad Creek and caught a couple, caught a couple big ones in there. Yeah. And we only caught, we caught one smallmouth that day. We caught 35 fish that day. We caught one smallmouth. Mm-hmm. 35 keepers. That's how it is for me in the spring up there. I'd, I'll catch largemouth all day. I might not, I might never see a smallmouth. You just got to know where they, you got to know where they stage. They, they stage differently. This year, actually, I, was, I take that back. This year I caught more smallmouth because I fished this spring up in the rocks specifically for them. But like when I go, like to go up there and crack a big bag in the spring, it's, you're right. You're largemouth fishing 99% get, of the time. You don't go up and fish the upper Susky too much, do you? I haven't the last two or three years, and I live literally right there. It's such a good fishery <laughs> for you to, like, not really tap into. Yeah. Well, I you, mean, yeah, you live, like, five minutes from the ramp. <laughs> I'm five minutes from Glen Cove, if I, yeah. like, right up the street. But I just, I've been going to fishing Joptown and Bush River and the Flats, like, the last two or three years. I like, just, so I, hard. I highly enjoy fishing yeah. in Joppa Town. I mean, Me that's too. pretty much where I started fishing. Like, I used to take kayak up there and go to Broad Creek, like, mm-hmm. every day after school or work. Like, I, was, I spent a lot of time in Broad Creek. I mean, too. But, when I was when I was a kid, we, me and my dad used to take a canoe. A canoe. We would launch yeah. in in Broad Creek, yeah. take a canoe out, and you know, and just mess mess around with bass and crappie. There's some giant crappie in Conowingo too. I've heard that, that. That's one fish that I wish I could go out and actually catch. Every time I've tried to go and catch crappie, I can't catch them. We've just like <laughs> randomly ran into them. Yeah, um, that's all that I can do. Uh, I had a, a friend of mine. We were in separate boats. But we were we were fishing the same bank like fifty yards apart, right. and I he caught one. It was like sixteen and a half inches. Shoot. Yeah, it was giant. We had a uh, uh, one of the guys in one of our club tournaments up there in the fall caught a sixteen inch crappie in, in in our club tournament. Yep, and Miles, like brought it home. Miles has been trying to get me and the next to go up there and fish them. Uh, I think it's a Tuesday, Tuesday night tournament. Oh, uh, Wednesday. Yeah, no, Wednesday, no, no. The Conowingo's on Tuesday. Is it, oh yeah, because Northeast is Wednesday. Well, and the and the Conowingo opens. He's, the uh, opens, opens are, fun. are fun. Opens are a lot of fun. Those are a lot Giggity. of fun. Me and, me, and Miles had a, me and Miles had a good tournament. Yeah. And it, uh, he he fished with me one day. We ended up we finished third in one of those. Yeah, me and Miles got a... And then me and you had that, like, super last-minute heroic day. Dude, yeah, last... One you know, fish. Last five minutes, we catch three three largemouth off a smallmouth spot. Yeah, and two like, were like... I've like, never <laughs> caught a largemouth in this in, in this area in my like in my life. And two were like over we four it. pounds. It was crazy. It was insane. No, it, was a, it was a two and a half, a two and three quarter, and a three and a half. In, yeah. Within like six casts. Yes. And then we had to go. <laughs> so the best part was... <laughs> the best part was I... Giggity. You did... What I... I can't remember who... I know you caught the first one, and then I caught the Giggity. second one, and then I caught the third one. But I, as soon as so, I was throwing a shaky. It was head. funny, like yeah, I threw a Nedry again. And I catch a, I catch like a, a two and three quarter. Yeah, he throws a shaky head Giggity. out, catches a two and a half, and he looks at, as I'm calling, like I'm trying to pick out these like twelve inch smallmouth and figure out which one of these twelve inch smallmouth or is the smallest <laughs> one. And he he just looks at me and goes, I "Think I should throw this?" He had a black and blue jig on. He's like, I "Think I should throw a jig out there to get a bigger bite?" I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" He fires a jig out there, boom, three and a half pounder. <laughs> yeah, well, and then I'm like, uh, "Tony, we gotta go." <laughs> Dude, it was it was stupid. I had just caught a fish on the shaky head. I'm like, "Okay, put it down. Let's throw the jig out." I'm like, "They've seen the shaky head ten times." Like, They've probably seen the jig ten times. I looked at Tony. It, not we that, were not, not on we cut it. We cut it so close when we left that spot. I looked at Tony and said, "Don't worry about me. Just get us back on time." <laughs> I broke so. I actually broke so much shit on the boat doing that. Like I, uh, one of my, t- and then we we missed yeah. a ch- we missed we ended up we missed a check by like a quarter pound or like a tenth of a yeah, pound. Yeah, it was stupid. Damn. Yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, did you you broke shit on the boat? I did. My uh, my front light post flew out. Um, <laughs> the uh, the back light. No, they didn't have the back light post in because I had my poles. Um, what the hell else? One of the screws that like seats in the trolling motor housing was gone. <laughs> oh yeah, that should happen. Um, and like every single rod that my that was left in my rod locker was completely tangled up. Um, a couple of the the lids. That's what like happens the, when you don't use rod socks? Well, the lids that were that uh, screwed in my uh, newer deck lids were they all loose? The, all the screws were fucking loose. <laughs> every single one. It was it was, like, God, it was yeah. not it was not called. Bro, you, I should like, and I was balls open. Like you could hear the motor. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I mean, we were we were wide. Open. I mean, it was, I'm not saying it wasn't like super rough, but it was like foot like foot and a half chop. 
Uh, like Tony's wide open through it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hammer down, trimmed out. <laughs> like Dale Earnhardt would have been proud. Dale Earnhardt would have been proud. Of and him. I'm just holding on. I'm just holding on to get <laughs> bounce all over the place. Uh, and we we actually pulled up. We we pulled up to the. Uh, to the ramp with about 10 seconds to spare. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think we got fifth, right? We got one out of the money or something. I think we got six. They paid five. Yeah, we were one out of the money. We were like, we were a tenth of a pound out of the money. I, I mean, that was a there was like I mean, there was a fair amount of boats. There was, I think it was like 30 boats in that yeah, tournament. Too. I was pretty I was pretty proud of that though because like I mean, we came in with we had four large mouth, one small mouth, and honestly, our our small mouth was a line burner. We had mm-hmm. like almost 13 pounds, so we had the right fish. For what we had, we just needed we just, to get rid of that one small mill. Exactly. If we would have had another five minutes, I think we would have done it. The funny part was we weren't even going to fish that spot. We went up to another area to fish another spot, and there was mm-hmm. a boat on it. Yep. And I was like, hey, Tony, go over here. There's a, there's a spot over here. It's the yep. way it normally works. Yeah, it was crazy. And then Kevin was like, ha, I can now I can tell Kevin I found his rock. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Tony, that was Tony's, buddy, Tony's buddy Kevin loves that, loves that spot. <laughs> there's always fish on that spot. There's always, always, always fish there. You know yes. the funny thing about that river is though, like, and I was t- I talk, me and Nate talk a lot about Conolingo, like, I cannot consistently catch fish up there in the grass. Oh. I cannot do it. It is the only. Don't drink is, that. That's dip spit in it. <laughs> no, it's just a zin pack. Oh, that is the only. That's the same thing. <laughs> that is the only it's body of water. <laughs> it's the only body of water that I've ever fished that I cannot consistently catch fish in grass, and it irritates the shit out of me. It's so it's actually a really tough place to fish um, for somebody who's not familiar with it and not familiar with fishing current systems mm-hmm. because it's it, the the grass bite up there is all current related. Like if they if they're not running current, they won't eat any grass. It, it's very very hard. Yeah. Well, and that's what's frustrating is because I guarantee you, they're the winning bag of fish ninety nine percent of the time is in grass up there. Oh yeah. I mean, there. I mean, there was the last couple of tournaments that were up there the, that I didn't fish. Um, before, well, I fished one in December, but the couple before that, I mean, it was that uh, was over twenty pounds, a large mouth. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a mixed bag. Like they had four four large mouth and one small mouth, but they had twenty pounds, like two weeks yeah. in a row. And their small mouth was like four pounds. So I mean, they were yeah. you know. But they were. I mean, as from what I from what I understand, those came out of grass. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. In late November, mm-hmm. you know, so. Still hanging on that late in the year up there? Oh, yeah. Okay. There was well, gra- there was still grass up there oh, when yeah, we fished in was, December. Yeah, there was grass on the, on the flats still in November, too, which is crazy. Yeah. So there's always grass out there? You just got to find well, it. Well, matted, <laughs> floating, nasty. Just oh, yeah, the, ma- the matted black, stuff you can't Black, find. gross, but slimy. Yeah. But if you can find the grass, I mean, that, that, that's pretty much any body of water. Like, if you can find grass in November, there's fish in it. It, it may not be the... It may not be the right fish. It may not be the you know the winning fish, but there's always fish in it. I think I. Oh, I think I think I told you to go to, to go fish some grass. You had a, well, like a club. Did you have like a club tournament in November or something? Um, in November. Or were you, you fishing fishing something? I told you. I feel like I. I think, I think it was you. <laughs> Maybe it might have, it might have been one of the Nate Brown tournaments in December. Maybe. He was a drill fishing. It was, it, it was. I told you. Yeah, I told you there where there was some grass. Yeah, to go check it out and didn't didn't pan out for you. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there were fish. There. You caught fish there. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. They were just they were the wrong size. Right. The issue with that was it was so foggy. It took me an hour to get there, where it should have taken me ten minutes. And then it took He's me. I wasted two and a half hours that day just, you know. What doing stupid that? shit. <laughs> oh, it is Burke. I you guys, you guys remember when Tony ate shit and fell down on the ground? I do remember that. Podcast? I forgot about that. That is totally about to happen. Oh. oh, dear. That is very much so about to happen to me. Paul, don't make it happen. No, I, got I got you. Is that the chair? Is that the same chair? Oh! Move your hands. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Fixed. Okay. Does it have three legs? Oh, yeah. I do though. Just did some good old fashioned wood glue and fix that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This chair is only from 1956, so. Is that actually accurate? I don't know if it's actually accurate, but it's old as balls. I can tell you that much. I fished. I fished one of Nate Brown's tournaments. Yeah, you won it. And I won. I fished. I fished one, and I caught <laughs> we one didn't even, fish. We didn't even know we were getting into it until uh, 11 o'clock when Miles was like, "You gonna do the Nate's thing tomorrow?" I was like, Where "I don't know." Nate? Ron's asleep. <laughs> Where's Nate at? Where you at, Nate? Perch fishing. Come on! I know he was on the Susquehanna earlier. He was on Conowingo. He was on Conowingo. 
Yeah, so he, I, he was I was like, you can. Get, uh, me and Nick to go up there and fish the Northeast. And I told him, I was like, I don't know a damn thing about the Northeast. Dude, I don't either. Me, neither me one Nick. of us had been up. Me and Ron hadn't been up there for a month and a half. Like yeah. the last time either one of us was up there was our club tournament in, in the beginning of November. And, you know, we just, went up, we just went up there and fished. And we just happened to find, I mean, the water was chocolate milk. That's how it was. I and, think it was yeah. the weekend before me and Nick went yeah. up there. And we went out just like a Sunday just to try to figure something out. I call it one, like, one-pound fish. That was it. So we we actually, <laughs> I mean, we, we thought we had an okay day. We didn't think it was, we did as well as we did. Right. Uh, and, I Everybody mean, there were. just did worse. There were seven <laughs> fish brought into the scales yeah, in that tournament. We had long. five of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we yeah, didn't win worker because Vince Vince caught a five pounder. Oh shit. That was his yeah. one that was his one fish. Another another boat had like a two and a half pounder and then we had we had five for about 11, 11 12 pounds. But we I mean we caught six keepers that day. I, we we figured well shit, we neither one of us had been up here. The water's chocolate milk, and, you know, we, yeah. I guess we did okay. We ought to go way in and we get we we get up into the six mile an hour zone and Nate's fishing up there and we're like I was like you got five yet and he's like dude I don't have a fish. <laughs> God. I was like uh all right. And he's a stud. What's up, Ramster? That shit's brutal, man. Yeah, I mean him and him and Chad had like twenty three pounds the weekend before. It's just brutal. Like I don't. But the conditions changed. I don't like oh, fishing yeah. this time. They went. Of year it went from being like crystal clear up there to being chocolate milk. Like once December hits, like once the month of the year starts with the letter D. I am no fishing, like period. D is for duck hunting. D is for duck hunting. <laughs> like November, Thanksgiving, after that is for duck hunting. Um, I spent more time cold water fishing this year than ever, and it's been phenomenal. I love cold water fishing. Oh, I mean, I do. Like I like it in the spring. I do a lot of. I do a lot of. I do a lot of wintertime bass fishing. I, I love wintertime bass fishing. It's What's up, that's like my one of my favorite know. times of year to fish, mostly because there's nobody on the water. Yeah. So the tournament, we ended up catching all of our, uh, pretty much all of our fish, in, off two specific casts. That's awesome. Like they were just very, very structure related, and the the one spot, it, the wind was blowing pretty bad, and uh, Ron throughout the day while we were fishing this one spot, Ron got me lined up to make the right cast three times, and I caught three three of our keepers on those three casts. If I could make that right cast, it. It was almost guaranteed a fish. It was just making that cast in 25 mile an hour winds <laughs> when you're throwing a shad wrap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck that that weighs, you know, like an eighth of an ounce. Fuck that shit. Backlash after backlash after no, backlash. No, no. Shad wraps and throw on the spinner rods. Are you talking about spinner rods? Yeah. You can't. You, you pretty much can't cast a shad wrap you on a big cast. No, it's not too bad. I, I, don't, I don't think I got a single. A single wind knot. Megan's uh, sending me stupid shit. Um, <laughs> is she watching? I don't that, know. That probably. One, that's one thing we've never really talked about. Throwing crankbaits on spinner rods. Oh, I've done it. I love it. I yeah. actually really like it. Dude, there's a lot of things I actually found this year that I enjoy throwing on spinning combinations over top of fucking bait casting combinations. And that's weird for me to say because I hate spinning combos. Like, I don't like throwing spinning rods at all. Somebody we were just talking about apparently throws a jig on a spinning rod too, which blows my mind. What oh, yeah. kind of jig? Brown. And yeah. you know what? It's I've funny. seen it. I can't say. I've seen it's it. It's funny that you say it's that because stupid. that's exactly what I was going to say. I've seen it, dude. It, it blows started, my mind. I was With 25-pound mono. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, I'm, he's not lying. When he casts it, it's like I just hear like, 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 like you, you hear just, this like big line just like slapping the it, bail. It reminds me it's of so when funny. like I first started fishing like with a piece of shit Walmart so rod. Go. Yes, you still do that, dude. <laughs> okay, so we fished the 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 last Chester County in uh, in October, and like he's always told me like he, we've never we we fished all the Chester counties together this year, me and Nate, and we had never we never really fished uh, the the stuff that he would throw a jig on. Right. And that last tournament, that's what we were fishing. And he's like, he he pulls out this spinner, this <laughs> this broomstick spinning rod. Oh yeah, oh yeah. With this with with a jig and like twenty five pound line, <laughs> and he 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 casts it once. The first time he cast it, I thought he like blew up his rod. Like that's how much noise the line's Jesus. making on the reel. And then I'm like, this is fucking retarded. And then he, <laughs> he then he he goes, Whoa, no no no. That. Wait a minute, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. It started with. 
There he is. Boom. <laughs> that he always says it. There he is. Yep. It's like real quiet. It's like, oh, the just, I mean, if you guys I mean, there he is. Who, just whack, you guys just just whacks like a four pounder. say this, who is it? It's Nate. It's Nate. It Nate. It's Nate Brown. Oh, it's Nate. Yeah. <laughs> it's Nate. I'm t- dude, it's, I've witnessed, like, Paul is not exaggerating. I've witnessed this happen. Why? Is I don't he know. throwing fucking... I don't okay, know, so wait. Is because Nate, he can, hold up. Is Nate Brown that fisherman that goes... I've never fished with him before. I know he's a good dude. But is Nate Brown that fisherman that goes out and fishes with whatever is in the boat and no. just makes it work? No, he specifically fishes a jig, a with, jig mono. With, that, with mono oh. on that on a spinning rod. Thanks, bro. Um, because of how he can cast it. So last weekend, we all, me, Miles, Nick, and Nate, we all rode up with Nate to SFT for the Bass Fest. I get into Nate's truck in the back seat. I'm like, good lord, we don't even have to go to SFT. <laughs> he, has, he literally has a whole tackle shop in his truck. Like, How many duck decoys are back I, there, and what kind were they? Because I'm curious. I didn't see. Uh, oh, there, there might have been like one or two. Probably keeps the doors door. unlocked. Right. <laughs> I stick my hand in the door to close it, and there's crankbaits in the Where, Hey, tag his ass door. in here. Tag St- his he ass. still hasn't fixed his mirror yet either, has he? He got a new mirror. Oh, he did? Yeah. Finally. Brand new truck. Brand new truck. He busts, busts the mirror off. <laughs> I heard he ran it out of oil already. <laughs> How do you run it out of oil? He, there's, well, he does drive a lot. The, <laughs> he, he, we, Nate's, a, Nate's a trip. I love him. We lost I love a little bit of cargo on the way back home from us at the... Oh yeah, out of the back. Yeah, there were some some things in the back of the truck. One of them blew out. <laughs> yeah. Well, how was how wow. was so how was Bass Fest? Other than crowded, it was crowded. I heard there was like it was like shoulder to shoulder in there. Oh yeah, so they have. I mean, you could probably got the tent, uh, yeah. they, tent they had when KVD came on. I heard I'm sure was, that was the. Most I heard they, there was day. there was like, like a line from like, the tent to like the other side of the store, and then Mike and the other guys come out, and they're like. They took down the back wall, like the I, and then yeah, I heard it was like fifteen rows deep. Yeah, outside of the tent. Yeah, they had like fifteen rows of people. My yeah, buddy was insane. telling me. I mean, good for them though. That's awesome. Dude. Yeah, it hey. was a. They say, um, my my buddy knows the Shimano rep up there. They because they've bought so much stuff from him. So, yeah. um, the Shimano rep was telling him on Saturday. Oh, there's that, Nate. That Friday was there. <laughs> hey, what's up, Nate? That. There he is. What, Nate, so tell us why you throw Nate, a jig on like a he fucking said, surf where rod. Where are we going? <laughs> so we're going, hey, we're going to uh, Millington, Delaware tackle shop to get you a new surf rod to throw your jig on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up, dude. You can't just bring him up here on the show and then just make fun of the guy. No. <laughs> yes, we can. Honestly, honestly, I respect it. You know why? Because dude, no, here's, a, here's serious, exactly how this happened. straight up from Nate. Uh, I, why are you throwing a jig on mono? Dude, wait tell a minute! Wait a minute! I'm gonna tell you how this worked. We were Why fishing. No? We we're fishing a Conwingo tournament. I'll tell you all the show. We're, we're, we're fishing I won't tell a, you what he throws, but I'll tell you why. We're fishing a Conwingo tournament, and we ain't me and Nate. We're not doing shit. And uh, we go to fish this grass patch that I like, and I'm like, "Hey, let's fish here." We got like an hour left, um, and he whips out this the spinning rod with the jig, and I'm like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> whack? <laughs> like, what is this?" First cast, there he is. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is you going ain't hear, on? Well, hold on? First of all, you ain't hearing no drag on that spinner because he got that bitch cranked down. <laughs> well, I heard it because there was a ton of grass in there. I was like, God damn, dude, what in the hell is going on? So after that, I mean, you know, I was like, I went out and bought like $200 worth of different grass jigs. You ain't spent $200 on freaking baits or nothing hey, in your life. I'm going to tell you right now, I went to Tackle Warehouse after that and got every grass jig that they sold on there. Hold up. And then you I bought dirty jigs? Uh, I did buy a couple dirty jigs. There you jigs. go. Seven one medium heavy twenty pound oh uh, twenty pound fluoro, uh, and because he can put it in places most people can't with a bait caster, except for me. See, I don't fish a jig like that. I fish a jig out in the middle of nowhere, so like I don't I don't need that. Like so, I don't skip a jig a lot. I skip twenty pound twenty pound everything. fluoro. Somebody said it was mono. I thought it was twenty five pound mono. Well, it's because well, it could have been some. I'm pretty sure it's probably whatever so like, trialing big game. Would, it's probably whatever line pound, he's got laying around. Right. <laughs> I would be 15 pound fluoro, probably for my personal preference. I just find it funny because like I'm 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 so meticulous with my tackle, and then like we're fishing a tournament. He pull he pulls <laughs> out a, by the way. He pulls out this he pulls out this seven the you know, the seven one surf rod. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean that you could you could literally take to the Bay Bridge and jig stripers with. Like, <laughs> It's a carrot stick with duct tape in the middle of it from where it broke. It's excellent. 
P-Line. Dude, I like P-Line, honestly. 20-pound yeah, 20, 20 P-Line. I don't hate P-Line. Fluoro clear. I don't hate P-Line. Dude, P-Line's great. Like, Give like you the P-Line tactical? So, so I don't like it. I haven't thrown it. You don't like P-Line tactical? The tactical is okay. The 15, the the 15 pound and above fluoro clear is okay for like the bay, but like fish and clear water, Too much stress. hell no. How does he get the line to stay on the reel with the bail open? We don't know. We have no idea. Well, we, we don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a, a mystery. It, it, it's a secret. <laughs> Ancient Chinese secret. I don't know. I yeah, we say, pull up. Uh, we pull up in the. We pull up in this tournament. We we ended up with a good bet. We had nineteen pounds. I can't say. But I he's agree like he just whips out this fucking spinner rod. And he's like, Wah. <laughs> we go to another place. Womp. <laughs> he's like, make sure make sure you give me like ten minutes to go to this place. This place close to the ramp. We pull up to the ramp. Throws a jig in there. Bump three and a half pounder. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. I can't say my setups are exactly the same, and or I cannot say that I even throw a jig. <laughs> in my house, it's a tall game setup. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's crazy. Dude. I can't even say that I it's throw a awesome, jig honestly. nearly enough to even have an opinion. But I have found that I really enjoy throwing a jig on a spinning setup. We, uh, I don't. Yeah, me too, I but do. I'm throwing finesse jigs. I don't you're throw wide. Small, you're, you're throwing those little jigs. I'm on throwing there. three eighths to oh. half ounce jigs on it. Really? Oh, three eighths is plenty heavy enough to throw a bait caster. Well, yes, yeah. but. But that's okay, what I'm so, telling you right now is I have actually chosen to continue to throw the jig on so, the spinning rod because it's not the casting ability of it. It's not so much for me the casting. I feel like the spinning rods. You feel like you can work it better? I feel like I can just, yes. I feel so, like there's just that work and that sensitivity to a spinning rod because the eyes are down at the bottom, just the way that it. So I will tell you that the only, the, the main reason that I throw a bait caster is because you don't, you don't have enough line pickup on a spinning rod. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah you're, you're yeah. actually, it's a really good point. I, I fully, That's I fully really agree with that. And if you've ever, I mean, if you've ever had a fish, like pick up, uh, if you fish, fish a jig a lot. A big like fish a, will a move fish, a lot. A fish that picks yeah. up a jig and runs yeah. with it, oh, like yeah. trying to catch up to, you know, catch. trying to catch up to I it. I mean, you can get different gear ratios with it. Even a high speed spinning reel, yeah. It, yeah. you're looking at, you know, a high speed spinning reel is like 21 inches per turn, where a high speed bait caster is like 31 inches per turn. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's a huge difference. I mean, you're you're picking up like 50 percent more line. I will say my number one confidence jig. Now it's not. It's for it's a small mouth bait. I'm not going to pretend, jigs, bro. It's okay. not. It's, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's a smallmouth jig. It's a finesse smallmouth football jig, and it go, I throw it up to one ounce, but it's on a spinning rod. What is it? I'm not telling you. I know I'll exactly tell you. What you know what it is. I've, I've already told you what it is, I just not on is. the show. Um, smallmouth Crush talks a lot about it, believe it or not. I can hear and tell you right now, I'm going to start throwing mop jigs this spring. I have a, a ton of I'll them. I'll throw a bunch of mop like jigs them. this spring. Well, I'm I, get into you it. need to be throwing it right now. That's I, when it's good. I don't First off, I like, like the fact that the mop jig is like a jig, which is already a big bait presentation, but it's like a bigger jig bait presentation. So if you want a bigger like jig bait presentation, how about that new missile jig? I was just about to that say. That thing is giant. That, that, what is it? crazy. The new missile jig, it's like that. It's, a ten, it's it, fucking wild. Is it just a skirt? It's built on a 10 ot hook. Did you guys ever see the dude? Did y'all ever see the Catch Outdoors Mopzilla? Remember yeah, that? I did. I might. I, Why not? So it didn't make a lot of sense to me uh, until I saw John Cruz had a, he put a video on his Facebook um, with like the trailers that it's made to rig with, and it's he like one like he had a big he had a white jig with a big with a like a like a seven eight Kytec on it. Like, oh, the, you don't have them over here. Like, the, the Kytex that you had over here? Yeah. Like, he, that's what he had on the back of it. A freaking 7-inch Kytex. Yeah, so like a 7-8 on Kytex. On a, on a jig. <laughs> a 7-inch Kytex on a fucking jig. Yep. yep. And then he had a... Yep. The yep. other one he had rigged up was a... That's a big, big... A, a non-production big. crawl. It was a it was an 8-inch crawl so, right. on the back of a jig. And and like Bro had an eight inch lobster on his face. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, when you think you think about it, like it, you know, designed for, you know, some of that uh, you know, it, you know, it's not gonna be designed for Ooh, a good question, Miles. It's more like um oh we can talk about we can oh, talk all I, I about wanna that. I do wanna talk about that a little bit. My uh, but, hold on, wait, no, so, this yet, so this big jig so this so this big jig's made for like your southern lakes and brush pile, like deep brush pile fishing, you know, where you're looking at six to eight pound bass, you know, that are on, that are Bugs. that are in these Big brush fish. piles. So, oh. you know, it's a big fish bait. You know, it's made to get that bigger bite. Right. 
So the Berkeley Cridge. Oh, we're going there now. We let's go there now. Yeah. So, okay. So oh dear. Dude, so let me start this off by on. saying I am and and everybody you know like I have a I have a boat full of Berkeley products. I I, I love Berkeley products. That's the I, jig. I fish. Oh, that's your oh. that's your jig. That's mm -hmm. not the big jig. That's that's his jig. That's my jig. So I, don't throw it. Doesn't work. I love Berkeley. I fish a lot of Berkeley I stuff. <laughs> I, I, I fish a lot of Berkeley plastics. No, I, I fish Berkeley crankbaits. However, this Cridge, when they come out and they say that it's a hundred percent new, yeah, okay, it's it, it is a take. It is not a hundred percent new. Nothing from Berkeley is one hundred. So it is a new. it is Nothing. a it is a Nothing take. Wrong. Yeah, I have a, I like yeah. ten of them. I don't have a throw. It is a redesigned Jack All yeah. Riser. It, it's a little bit bigger. Tell oh hold up, I'm Take sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but tell me again if from the Jack All Riser. So another JDM company. Um, not particularly JDM because they're, I, I mean they're pretty you pretty well established in the it, U.S. It, yeah. Um, but it, it it's now is it the same? It doesn't uh, mean the bait was JDM. It's not a copy. But... They they definitely redesigned it and they made it better for what they're trying to do with it. Yeah. But. Yeah. It's the same thing that Koya Fujita used the Jack All Riser to. It's the 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 style that they're trying to fish it is the same way that Koya Fujita top ten you know, and almost won the Lake Murray tournament. It's a fishing it subsurface. It's made. It was made to be a top water. The Jack All Riser was made to be a top water bait. He's fishing it subsurface on on forward facing sonar. Um, and, and that's but, a technique so, that, that came out. So they they took that idea and they but they I'm improved totally it. I'm totally okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. Stop putting on your thing. This is a hundred percent a new bait. Well, and here, that's here's the, the bullshit behind Berkeley that I can't stand. Be like, hey, we took this idea, so we I can, completely redesigned it, and this is what we have now. Instead so I can just like if, fuck if they want, jack all. So if they want to call that, the, if they want to call like that, that one new, okay, wait, like, because it's it is a lot different. It's a plastic bill versus a metal bill. It's it, it's weighted differently. Right. Right. Okay, like I okay, I can almost but concept. that but other bait that they the same released. Concept. So they released another bait at the same time, which is basically like a lipless minnow style bait, and again, it was it was put out there as brand new. Was that the uh, the finisher? Finisher, finisher yeah. yeah. That's all that one too. And they used to call me in high school. So the what Not I anymore. As yeah. soon as the yeah, fucking the two second finisher. <laughs> as soon as as soon as I see this, I'm like, that's not a hundred percent new. Six cents released that a bait almost exactly like it, like five years ago, called the Hyper Jerk. It, it's almost exactly the same. That that kind of it, that kind of like rubbed me the wrong way. I'm you're not gonna... already you're already pointing out two specific applications that, but that's where I'm saying. It's totally okay to reinvent the wheel, right. but don't discredit it's who all invented the, the wheel. It's all the marketing. Yeah. Speaking well, the marketing's wrong. Money. Did you did you did you see that douchebag video that got uh, that uh, uh, Lunkers TV put out? No. Yeah. Should we share this on the internet right now? Uh, no, but check it. Definitely, <laughs> definitely check it out later. Uh, he was bashing Ben Milliken because Ben Milliken had said something about Guggenbeats. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah. No, no, but I saw some older guy that was bashing somebody on Facebook the other day. I can't remember what the older gentleman's name was in the fishing industry, complaining about how the kid was handed everything. The kid wants, this guy wants to be handed everything for fishing nothing. Oh, it was Kyle so, Hall. No, it was Jacob Fouts. Okay. So Jacob Fouts, he put out a video Something about, that a, he put out on about a month ago. And it wasn't necessarily that he wanted everything. I think it got taken out of context. I'll drop the link. So basically what what Jacob Fouts said was like his entire like he's a younger angler and coming up, you know, it was he what was, YouTube am I supposed to look up? He was told that Remember that we don't have sound. You're supposed to I'm just putting a link in for them to oh. look at. All we should do, you know, he just put your time in on the water, put your time in on the water. And, like, he put his time in. He made the Elite Series, and over two years of the Elite Series, he's made, from from sponsor dollars, $7,000. Okay. So. And, you know, it's because, you know, he wasn't, he, he was basically saying that, like, everything, you know, that it, it, the he was trying to explain the reality of 
becoming a professional angler that it's not everything that you see that just because you make the elite series doesn't mean you're going to be you, you know that people are just going to flock to you and and, get, and just throw money at you right and i think it was taken out of context um and it, it kind of came out sounding like that he was a you know he was kind of being like a little whiny bitch <laughs> It was and definitely I taken to that context. And I don't think what? that's how he necessarily meant it to come out. I, I think he he was just trying to show, hey, this is this is what I was told when I came up through college. He was a college fisherman. When I came up through college fishing and I, I qualified for the elites, and you know this is what this is my story. This is what happened to me. And you know don't expect everything to just come to you. And, you know, it got, it, then it was like, you know, a whole this stuff came out. Ishman Rowe put out a, and, and Ishman Rowe is one of the hardest working people in the fishing industry. Yeah. The dude goes to boat dealerships and sells Ranger boats off their show, showroom for them. Like he, he is always putting in time. He for, doesn't have to do that either. No, but he does because yeah. that's, you know, that's how he shows his value yeah. to his sponsors. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the other thing that they were talking about was Good luck social selling media. A Ranger right now. You know, Jacob Fouts didn't have a didn't have a social media presence. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No shit. <laughs> and you know, so he you know, they were you know, there, so there was that. a lot that was coming out about that. And a lot of it got taken out of context. And I don't think Jacob Fouts is a bad uh, is a bad guy. I don't think he you know, I don't think he's a crybaby. I think he, you know, he he really just wanted to put this video out to say, you know, hey, Here's what I was told from the time that I was a kid coming up. I've made the Elite Series. Here's where I am now. It, you know, it's not always... You know, Sunshine, it's not, it's roses. Not all, it's, not all, it's not all the glory that you think it is. And all this it's not super all, cool yeah, shit. It's not, all, right. it, it's not all, you know, sunshine and unicorn farts. It, oh. it, I love you know, that, unicorn farts right on it's, my nose. <laughs> you know, that, you know if, you're, if you're going to make a living out of professional fishing, you ha you can't just... It's not just about making, you know, making that top level tour. You know, it's there's more to it than that. Get that and, out of your mouth yeah. right now. and that's where I, th I think a lot of the context. What's he got? Um, it's funny, Nate just, Nate just texted me. What did he say? No, I'll tell you later. Um, <laughs> Stop so, telling my secrets. Uh, so... You know, I, I don't think, like I said, I think a lot of it was taken out of context. The, the kid's a good, he's a good fisherman. Um, you know, he's just not, he, he's never, like he was saying in his video, he's like, I've always been kind of a private person. So social media wasn't really, you know, something that I, you know, that he flocked to. And it, I, I think, like I said, a lot of it just got taken out of context. And, you know, he's, he actually lost, he actually lost sponsors from releasing that video. Really? Yeah. Well, he. I mean, it's not like you took that big of a hit if they were only giving him seven grand. Right. I mean, yeah. like, oh no, now I'm down to three grand. Like, what the hell? I would have. Yeah. I mean, same. You know, it's I've and I'm the like I've never been one to I've never I've never had a sponsor in my life uh, aside from I will say you know I not even like an official a sponsor free like packs of baits here and there. You know, t Tyler with UMA, you know, I, I support Tyler and I I'm not sponsored by Tyler, but, you know, it's th that's the closest thing that I have to a sponsor. Yeah. You're not I, sponsored because by Tyler, but we're sponsored we by Tyler. We are sponsored by Tyler. So you're kind of sponsored by Tyler? It sounds like your chimney's on fire again. <laughs> that's what I was trying to <laughs> Yeah, we're, uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but my house almost burned down earlier. Wait, today? Phoebe, yeah. what's burning? She's oh, never cooking for you like ever again, dude. No, it's fine. It's just something in the oven. It's it sounds fine. like the freaking... Uh, you might want to go it's check fine. that. What's it's, burning? It's fine. I would... I was, just, <laughs> I was just busting Damn, some balls. dude, why'd you do that? You just put her whole shit out there for all 12 I was just, people I was just to see. Okay, but it really did happen. We're going to talk about it later. <laughs> I was just busting some balls. We definitely had a... So we yeah. just started a whole ass thing. Yeah, so I, the whole Jacob Fouts, <laughs> the whole Jacob Fouts thing, I think it was just really taken out of context. Uh, you know, and I, I, like, I follow him, you know, I follow his Facebook, and I've actually started following him more, you know, more since, since he put out that video. Uh, and, you know, you can see a change in his... You can see a change in his brand where you know he's I'm he's trying to do you know, trying to do things the right way. <laughs> if you're lucky. He says you're sleeping in the you. truck. But like you know, like you know, Ish Monroe put out an article on Bassmaster that said you know this industry, the title of the article was this industry doesn't owe you anything, yeah, and talked about how he 
you know how that was good too. How he supports his sponsor, you know, not only do his sponsors support him, but how he supports his sponsors, and it's all about ROI. Like, yeah. you know, you have. I mean, a company is not going to give you money. You know, if they if they give you ten thousand dollars, they need to see a return of about a hundred for that oh, to yeah. be. Yeah. But uh, you know, to be um, legitimate, you know, for them to put out that ten thousand dollars. You know, that's your. Uh, you know the, the return on investment that you're really looking for. <laughs> That's actually it's actually one of the things I struggle with. Did you with. just break the mic? No, no, no. It, it released from the bracket. Sean, not, <clears throat> not a lot of people know about the jack all riser. So this is one of the things that I actually struggle with a lot in in the college fishing is like when we would get when we got sponsors, people were like, "Great, so now they owe us." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. no, we promote them." That's what we like. Right. It's you not, have to show your value to them. Exactly. It's not just hey, we put their shit on our jersey and and whatever. Like if if Ardent, which was one of the sponsors, is going to give us fifty percent off, I expect all of you to when you buy shit to it run should, Ardent. It should be Ardent. Yeah. So hundred percent. Like, you know, like Ben. You know, Ben Ben Milliken was was talking. Uh, you know, uh, somebody. Which asked is him, why? What do you think? I'm throwing UMA all the time. Right. Somebody as you should tailored frogs all the time. Mm-hmm. Ben Milliken was on a he was on a podcast a few weeks ago, and they they were asking him like, what you know, what, what are you going to run on your jersey? True, there and goes, right there, he said, I'm, I'm going to run the same thing that I ran the opens. It's going to be a red jersey with a 405 on it, and whatever bass you know regulations need, you know, because you have to have like a you got to have bass, the bass, you have yeah, to have right. bass patch, mm-hmm. American flag stuff like sure. you know, stuff like that. Yeah, America, fuck yeah, um, <laughs> fuck yeah. I think the time. I think the Japanese anglers can have the Japanese flag on theirs, but bullshit. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, they're not American. As long so. as it's not the Rising Sun, we fought a war over that. Hey, um, what so, was the what was the link on the YouTube video you were talking about earlier? What? You said we were going to talk about it offline. Uh, we're we're online the now. Comments. It's a I, I don't. I, I, it's something from Lunkers. I just TV. can't remember where Lunkers TV. Yeah. Okay. Rob uh, Turkla. Didn't they do? They actually did a, a line that of rods for a while a, with that guy uh, is favorite, such a right? Fag. Oh yeah, he in this such video. Such a douchebag. Well, we're kicked That's off. This, we're kicked I off can't Facebook even, like, now. Hold up. I'm sorry. I'm not even Miles. I'm not <laughs> posting that because that guy Rob is he's a, he's a fag. Well, now we're really <laughs> kicked off. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, he's a, he's a definitely a tool in this. Video. I don't like his attitude. He's better. Bag. Like I'm better than everyone else in the fishing industry. <laughs> well, there like, you have it. Thanks everybody. It's been a great. Like ride. the dude's great at marketing. I'll give him that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you can't deny that. Like the dude's great at marketing. That's why they've done. I honestly have, have no clue who you guys are talking about right he's now. He's such. A, hold on. So the he's guy with Google Google Baits. Baits. Oh. The guy with Google. Yeah. Exactly. Oh. That's. Come do on, you man. understand now? So well, okay. So because like Google I said, he's done marketed a, to ten-year-olds. He's done a great job of marketing, Man. but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, no, no, like let's leave, not pretend that this shit them, doesn't work. To I mean, give them credit, to give them credit where credit is due, they they made the they made the the YouTube fishing scene what it is. It was, you know, there was a couple of people that were into that early that got that huge following, like Everybody's Ben Milliken, Ben Milliken, mm, the, Guggen, the Guggen Squad. No, they were definitely... They the were, Guggen Squad? Yes. They were big individually before they became the Guggen Squad. Though. I thought Guggen was started but they were by all, What's-His-Face. John. Go- John, John, B, John, John B. It was John B. AP Bassing, right? Uh, and then One uh, Rod. And, one Rod, One Reel, and, and Lake, Fork, TV. Lake Fork Guy. Wait, Lake so Fork, One yeah, Rod, One started. Reel started Guggen no, too? No, no, no. He, he was brought in later. He was brought in. But he's a local guy, though. Was kind of, he's kind local of cool. around I heard he, here, but like. I heard he got. I, I heard a story one time on a Facebook or. You talk about, uh, you talk about he, the Lock Raven story? Because, yeah, yeah. That yeah. he got. Um, we talked about that once. Say it. He got uh, somebody apparently couple, kicked his ass. A couple guys they jumped him at Locker even for spot because he was he was posting all the he was spot burning like all yeah. the all the spots. Bro, Locker I'm going to jail. If that up. happened to me. It was Sorry. probably freaking. <laughs> oh, I'm never mind. I, I yeah, <laughs> probably somebody we were talking about earlier. <laughs> it was probably somebody we were talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. But I'm, if that ever happened to me, I'm going to prison. <laughs> but uh, so those like, guys, you know, yeah, those guys all got up. Like they started. Yeah, that. I would have stepped. They got together. Correct. They had a good YouTube. They were of like worth it. So they were like the not for burning spots because we already. I, mean, I think we're I think we're moving on. Dude, from hold that. up. Yeah, because now I'm we're talking saying, about violence. Like, 
We, uh, which I no, like. I'm not talking about <laughs> violence. I'm talking about spot burning. I'm talking uh, about spot burning and the gunpowder because the all three spots. Videos. I've taken videos. Everybody's taken videos. But you gotta get you gotta get to the notion. You gotta get to the point. You gotta look at the picture. There's 40 boats behind you. I don't care. Yeah. Everybody sees everything. It's the community watering hole. Yeah. So, but back to Paul's point is, is like I think that a lot of those like Lake Fork guy was was pretty successful before Guggen. Yeah, um, with those guys, those oh, Guggen yeah. guys were the between them and Ben Milliken, they mm. were like the precursor, like the the original make the YouTube fishing popular. Guggen is huge. Oh, Guggen, Guggen is the they are. Huge. You, they're overnight. Much, they are the biggest, shittiest brand on Wait the market. Wait a minute. We, we they're were, actually the. They're one of the biggest. They're like the number one biggest selling brand on the market. I we know. were around really? at a time yeah. never, where Guggen did not exist. Be. I will not. Yes. I, will I, I refuse. Not yes. One. I refuse. Yes. Okay. Even if I'm like, you know any and I need something. I've never specific. bought any, but I get them in yes. like the. I get them in like the. The, okay. the mystery tackle box. Yeah, between I had, us, we yeah. do not buy Guggen on Bass and Beer Radio. Had, of course not. Yes. Duh. I had we do one, not buy Guggen on Bass and Beer Radio. Okay? I had one Guggen bait. Are you came listening, Guggen? It, it, it came in a mystery tackle we're, box. We're getting sued, dude. We're probably going to get sued. Or, no, this is a good episode. We're probably going to get sued. I have okay. one Guggen bait, and it came in a mystery tackle box. Yeah, I mean, I like... Mean, I have free, a, Okay, I, I have sold a couple it. of I mean, I guess not free. It, it I, came in the mystery tackle. I immediately sold it at the fishing flea market. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I don't use any of them, but we all know that there is a Guggen plastic that's decent. It, I don't think it's any better than other plastics. Exactly, so use the other plastics. So, Paul, you're selling your boat. How many, like, trash can fulls of stuff did you... Like, my uh, boat he's, is, he's trying to get us my boat is, off Facebook. My boat is just, super organized. You're just leaving it all in there, just giving it to him. No, my boat's super organized. When I came out, it all. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't have like random. There's so much juice in that boat. There's no. Yeah, I don't have random. Like a whole pallet full of stuff in there, at least, right? But it's all in. It's all in 3,700 boxes. <laughs> like it's all boxed up. I keep. Um, I have. What is the box sizes? Thirty seven hundred. So thirty seven hundred is your big box. It's like this big. The big ones. It's like yeah. Wyoming's big. So I. But, I keep. Big brown beaver. Yes. <laughs> this is the um, big brown beaver. Box. Depending on the time of the let me get one. Depending on the time of the year, I have eight to ten, thirty seven hundred, uh, regular thirty seven hundred boxes. Do not want that moon. Give that to Paul. Paul wants it. Um, so eight to ten thirty seven regular thirty seven hundred boxes, yeah. and five thirty seven hundred deep boxes. Oh, deep. Oh. The thirty seven hundred deep boxes is what I keep my plastics in. So they're just thirty the thirty seven hundred deep boxes without dividers, yeah. and then I just this is actually true. This is actually yeah. true. Martin's so comment is actually one hundred percent true. I feel the, like I haven't seen Martin on here in no, forever. No, no, no. What's so, up, Martin? Dude, Martin like was screwing with me. Like I swear to God, <laughs> he would throw a pack of Guggen baits in my boat before every tournament. <laughs> I, I shit you not. That's not okay, Martin. That's you don't do that. And then he stopped. That's after, like throwing a banana in somebody's boat. So he stopped after the fourth tournament because every tour, the first four tournaments, uh, he had a one or come in second. He was like, yeah, <laughs> fuck this guy. I was like, damn. Tony was secretly throwing those Guggen beats. I couldn't figure out where the hell they were coming from. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, oh, pack of Guggen beats. Let me go ahead and tie one of these Because, on. my, dude, my shit's unorganized. Hey, I mean, Jason, Jason, thanks how for joining you? us. I know um, you've been on my boat a few well, times. I got shit everywhere. I'm like, how the so hell does this get in here? Storage, it, I, I don't know how I'm going to organize the new boat. I'm going to have so much more room for activities. <laughs> no power tools on the new boat. There is going to be so much more tackle in the new boat. <laughs> oh, I did rig me up. So my mom actually got me a heated vest for Christmas. Oh, they're oh, so nice. Wait, is it nice one of the Carhartt vests? Oh. No, it's actually from uh, the place up on 136, heated for you. They make them so. Oh, nice. Dude. So it's it's a battery operated vest, but you can buy a harness, a splitter harness. You can run off twelve volt at the same time. So I got a battery sure. tender port. I put my trolling my battery. So you just plug power. your plug your vest. I can in. have that thing on high the whole time. I can so run you're mine. You're just gonna on plug it, it into the freaking battery in the yeah. back of the boat. Well, my trolling motor batteries on the front. So, so I can, I'm just gonna have a wire coming yeah. up to the jacket. Mine will run about. Uh, I can That'd run mine insane. about. I can run mine about oh, seven tested. hours on low. Which yeah. is usually enough. Like I usually, I don't yeah. typically have to well, run it on high. I do have the Milwaukee heated jacket. The the other weekend when I caught that the rock bass, yeah. I had the heated vest on. I had that sucker on high. I, dude, I was cooking. <laughs> I, I will say that the only time I that I've ever, out there the only time I've in. ever put mine on high was when me and uh, when I took Ron down to Lake Anna last year. 
Yeah. Uh, and we woke up in the morning and it was 14 degrees. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that'll do it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> when we woke up in the morning and was like, uh, yeah, fuck this. We're going to the tackle store. <laughs> we went to the tackle store until it, it heated up to a balmy 21. And then we went out. Mm. And then we absolutely yeah. just smoked them. We caught over 100 fish that day. Yeah, it sounds, I had sounds, a great time uh, sounds kind of year. familiar to something that recently happened to you. Yeah, I just got back from Lake Anna. Yeah, so Paul just recently got back from Lake Anna, and uh, him and Mr. Frank put the uh, put the smack down on them old greenbacks out there. We did. You, we so had you guys had epic. the big bag for the weekend, right? Uh, by we've had the biggest yeah bag by like that we've ever heard probably of by f- out of that side probably by fifteen pounds. Let's hear about <laughs> it. I want to hear all about it. So. Uh, drop yeah. the juice, Paul. Drop so, the Anna juice. Nobody else is going to Anna to fish, so drop it. Let's hear it. So when we um, uh, we got down on Wednesday, uh, we went out on Wednesday fish for a while. We, we caught a bunch of fi- caught a bunch of fish on Wednesday. Caught a bunch of fish on Thursday. Um, Friday we kind of figured something. We we struggled in the morning. We it, uh, on Lake Anna of all places at twelve o'clock. We we had caught one fish between the two of us. Damn. Um, and then, you know, so we decided to, you know, well, let's, we're going to run, we're going to run, let's try this, a, a different pattern. Yeah. And we started running this different pattern. We started, we started catching fish and we caught a lot of fish and I caught a couple good ones on Friday, uh, had a three and three quarter and one just shy of four. It was 3.98. Uh, so on Saturday, we're at the gas station getting our, getting our, our scrap leg and cheese sandwiches. Of course. <laughs> Because that's the best thing down there. Um, and we, Kevin. That uh, was such a good time watching people fight over those sandwiches. So we found out, she told us this week, they're like, hey, we can, you can just call them in and we'll have them ready for you. No. Way. Like, oh, oh, my gosh. No. Oh. So not, way. Only, I, not only that, we only had to call it in once. And then she just asked us how long we were going to be there. And it was just, she <laughs> had them ready for us. <laughs> She asked us how many we needed, you know, and we so we had everything. But anyway, so we're at the gas station, and Kevin's like, "Hey, hey, hey, Jason, what's up, buddy?" There's a guy. There's a guy that runs tournaments down here on Saturday. They're having a tournament. If you guys want to get in, and me and Frank looked at each other, and we we're like, "Man, you know, no, you know what? We're, let's just, we're just gonna go out and we're gonna have fun." And we get in a boat, and we're like, "Well, Hammered let's them. let's start where we care. <laughs> let's start where we caught that where you caught that where I caught that four pounder." And we so we started back there, and the wind's blowing thirty five miles an hour. And uh, the wind was very, I, I'm not going to go into the details on what it was, but the wind was very important. Um, so, you know, we started fishing, you know, some fishing in the wind some and kind of figured something out. Um, we kind of the same pattern that we ran on Friday, uh, but figured out that the water level had dropped. So the water flow, from Friday to Saturday, the water level had dropped almost a foot. And... I was like, you know what? I think they they might have moved out a little with the, with the water level dropping. Tied on a deeper diving crankbait. My second cast with that deeper diving crankbait was a four and a half pounder. I'm like, oh, all right, cool. That's a big that's a big fish for this side of the lake. Yeah, that's a big fish. Um, shout out to Mr. David Fritz. That was on a Fritz side seven. Nice. It's amazing. We had David Fritz come yeah. on. Paul goes down to Anna and has a smashed him on a Fritz side. Twenty one pound day on a Fritz side. Were you throwing a braid though? Uh, no, oh. I was throwing on twelve pound fluorocarbon. Uh, Not twenty. So we go, we Not go a little farther. We go a little farther. Uh, Frank's throwing a three quarter ounce jackhammer. Throws it out on, throws it out on this uh, little point that's sticking out. Boom, catches a four and a half pounder. And we're like, dang, like that's that's two big fish. I'm like, all right, this is a good, this is a good day. So we, here. we continue, yeah, we continue running, running this pattern, and um, our best five for the day ended up being twenty one point eight hey. five pounds. Um, we had three, three, four and a half pounders, a four point eight, uh, and a three and a quarter. So for our our total for the day, our best five for the day was twenty one point eight five pounds. Um, we would have had twenty one ish, like twenty one in during tournament hours. The the last the three and a quarter that we caught was was at was after tournament hours, but we would have had over twenty one uh, during tournament hours. So. Um, Murphy's Law. When you don't get into the tournament, you're definitely going to smash them. Of course. Uh, but that's that's one of the biggest bags that we've ever heard of coming out of that side of the lake. Oh, yeah. Um, the old guy that's down there that um, has has a good pulse on all the fishing there. It just works so well. Uh, 
He said, you know, it's been over two years since he heard of a 20-pound bag coming out of that side of the lake. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah, it was it was pretty good. And, I mean, 90% of the—we uh, caught all of our fish that day on— uh, or uh, 90% of our fish were either on a Fritz, a Fritz Side 7 or a Chatterbait. Nice. Yeah, my, uh, my first tournament of the year is on the cold side. Yeah. In mid-March. So well, mid March or pre spawn, it, it it could be epic. It could be epic. We'll it see. could be. I mean, that's a good time to catch a great big bag down there. You said, uh, well, you said uh, the water level dropped. Do they control that? Like kind of go? Well, it was. We got all that rain. Yeah. Um, like Monday and so Tuesday. It was high and took a so it was off. high, and then it, it it just dropped down to like normal. But they pool. don't they don't open and close gates like. No. Like Conowingo does. Mm-hmm. It's just constant. No, it's the only time that it dro- it will drop down there if they're like if like when the plants shut down, right? And they're not pulling water yeah. in, it'll drop. But right. for the most part, it stays pretty stable. But it was it was really high and, and yeah, Jason, it was so windy that day. Um, uh, Jason was fishing with Kevin. Uh, there, his uh, I talked to Kevin at like twelve o'clock, and he's like he's like yeah, dude, our uh, I think it was like it was probably before that it was like ten or eleven, and. He's like, dude, my trolling matter batteries are fried. Like, I can't even, like, I, I, I'm on 10 to move anywhere. Mm. Uh, because, the, I mean, the wind was legitimately blowing 35 miles an hour. I guess he's got enough power there in the dock. Oh, you guys had everything. What was he, th- did, he, was he did he buy Snails' yeah. old boot? What's up? Who, did someone, who bought Snails' uh, old boot? The Snails bought the boot from Kevin. Oh, his old boot? Yeah. With the electric motor? I don't know. So he, the, he bought, but Snails has the tracker now, right? Yeah, he bought that. Kevin bought yeah, that's it. That's a nice little boat, too. Yeah, oh, hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. It was, um, yeah, it, it was super, it was super windy. The wind was really important. Um, it, it's something that I don't pay attention to a lot around here, fishing tidal water, but it, down there, the it, wind, wind moves wind, fish so in much. In specific areas, I definitely pay attention to the God, wind. God, the wind was so, the, it was so, everything down there was dependent on the wind. Dave's tournament deck with jig is a good at Anna on the cold side. There you go. There's a little juice for you. Dude, I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna go down there the weekend before the tournament and like cause dude I missed I missed AOI this year by like less Are than Are you five guys fishing a tournament on Anna next year? The first tournament of the year. Twenty four. Yes. March March twenty third, I think is the date. Ah. Wow. I'll be in. So wait, what Texas. made what made Bass Militia decide to do that? So like the most of the club goes to Anna anyway. Um, so why not have the tour? Yeah, we all. Well, I'm not part of the club, even though I've been talking about being part of a club for fucking two so or three years now. The issue, um, the issue with that, and it's not an issue, but like the thing with so the reason why Outcast broke up is it got too big, and you had too many too you had too many people. So like the thing with what, bass. What about Mar- MR Bass and like M- and so they uh, MR Bass doesn't have that many. Like they have like seventeen members. Um, like River Rats has what like, we cap ours at sixteen. Uh, Team Outcast at one point had like thirty. Yeah, and it, it, it okay. twice Team Outcast has broke up. Both times it's been because the club got too big. One. Like it's, it's, I mean, when they happens, split from dude. when uh, originally when they split they split from River Rats, uh, yeah, that's how Team Outcast started, mm-hmm. um, and it was same same deal. That's why we ended up capping our size because it just got too big, and you end up getting like your these little, little clicks, these clicks, yeah, yeah. and, and, and it just, infighting, and yeah, and it just doesn't work out as well. Um, oh, Big John getting back in the club tournament. Who's he fishing with? A little I am very, very excited about that because I, do, I know for a fact that we're going to see Big John and hopefully Little John at the Thursday Nighters. Um, I know I know Big John had a lot of fun fishing a couple of the Thursday Nighters last year, and I think he's definitely pretty hyped up to come back for some more of the regular season Thursday Nighters. I hope he shows up for the Solstice this year. I still Gotta got be here for the Solstice. Sean, I still got a couple packs of those. Uh, the solstice, got to get Little John out for the solstice. I oh, for sure, you got to got at least yeah. come out and fish the solstice. Yeah, solstice I think, is fun. I think that's super important for uh, the whole entire Hanson crew to make it out for the solstice. But even definitely, if I, even if I miss the check by one spot, dude, I shit happens. I had a limit at the me, solstice. Me and Kevin ended up fourth. I had a limit this year. This we up, year? Yeah, we ended up. Me and Kevin were fourth. Okay, I had I had a that limit. Was like one of the only times that we did. Dude, you you and Nick, remember you and Nick were right next to me. I caught a fish before the trolling motor was down. Oh yeah, I do remember that was crazy. That. Yeah, we pulled up and you were already flipping. Well, we were. I guess we were into, already got something. Yeah, we were into Dundee and uh, we we me and Kevin did 
I'm pretty sure that was this year. I want to say it was this year. I don't know. It all blends together. I know the one yeah. year. The one year we ran it, we ended up fourth. We ran to we ran to Dundee. We're uh, we're catching. I mean, we caught fish, but they were all like twelve, like twelve to thirteen inch fish uh, that we were catching on frogs. And I was like, dude, we got to leave. Like, we can't. This this isn't going to do any good for us. I was like, we're going to hit one spot on the way back. Um, if they're there, like they'll be the right ones. Um, and we, so we ran back, we ran back, stopped at this one spot, um, caught three fish in like five casts, making the same exact cast, um, uh, that gave us uh, like eight, I mean, it was like eight pounds or something like that. Well, it, it was hey, good enough for fourth well. place. Yeah. That tournament, I had a limit in like 10 minutes for like seven pounds. I was like. Damn it. <laughs> it sucks. I am going Damn to, it. I think we caught two that night. <laughs> I'm going to Maybe approach one. fishing the Thursday nighters. A swing. Bit, a little bit different this year. I'm going to tell you right now. Just swing for them. I Don't worry it. about catching fish. Just just, just swing. You I'm going to tell you right well, now. I did what I did last year was I, I, think knew, where, the I knew where their fish was in the Thursday nighters, but I didn't want to be where the boats were in the Thursday nighters. I just wanted to go do my own thing. And your own thing doesn't work in the Thursday nighters because the fish are so concentrated in Joppa so Town at times. You'd be, it, it, you'd be surprised, I'm telling you. you can, I fish shit I'd never fished this year. I mean, you can I do... the shit out of them. Um, I, I can tell like, uh, there were a couple of those tournaments that were won from the flats. Couple of the Thursday, the couple, Thursday of the, couple of the Thursday nighters were on from the flats. Um, yeah, that's yeah. bullshit. For real? Uh, yeah. From yeah, who? Uh, we'll talk. We can talk. We can talk later. They were in. A, were not, they, were they throw, in a Phoenix? I'm not going to throw any names out there. No. Really? That guy you know goes back to the pond me. every time. <laughs> so, yeah, there were that's there. So there was a there were a couple a couple that were from the flats. Okay, it's seventy five percent true. Yeah, but I won. Where'd you go? The other twenty five percent. I mean. You know, I, 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 the first one that I won last year was, you know, an area that nobody, really nobody fished all year. Run into the flats for a Thursday night or is like desperation for gas money, in my opinion. So you're going to spend $100 or, in gas to maybe win 150 No, it's only, it's only 25 <laughs> minutes. It's 25 that's, a, that's a run in a three-hour tournament. By 25 minutes back, 25 minutes You're chewing up one hour of all your fishing time. might be able to there in three hours. Yeah. <laughs> With a 250. <laughs> With right. a 250. Yeah, I mean, if you're on a you know, two fifty four stroke, you're on. I mean, twenty five minute a twenty five minute run. Thanks, man. You're probably burning. It's probably fifty dollars. You're probably burning fifty dollars in gas. Brown. Hey, trip. I'll tell you what. That's only a twenty minute run and a bullet. Um. <laughs> so. I, I, that's a the rumble tastes minty. The one that I the, I said that the, earlier, minty. The minty first fish. one that I won, I I mean, I won fishing an area that really nobody fished all year. Um, it, you know, I just, the conditions lined up for it and I went in there, I caught three fish and they just happened to be three big ones. The funny thing about that was, is like for every year for like the last three years, that was like, everyone was in there. Yeah. And it's nobody, fished it. nobody really fished it this year. Yep. Um, you know, because the people follow the same this year. because people follow, well, it wasn't out of grass. I didn't catch it. I didn't win that out of grass. Me and me and Tom, what did we get? We got third or something, didn't we? Oh, the one night I yeah. fished with you? Yeah, I think we, I think we got second or, third, second or third. Was that the night Greg won because me and Chad got second? No, Greg definitely did not win because it was after me and Tom won that Greg started fishing. That. You know, me oh. and you have never <laughs> fished a Thursday nighter together, and I'm You're insulted not. by that. Well, you fished with Steve. So like, like Rob, I don't always fish, I fish with Steve. I fish with Skylar. I fish with Bradley. I fished so, two last year by myself. So I, I, I mean, I only fished with Candace, but... So Rob, Rob, that's Rob has the like the perfect point there. You know, if you is that to, the Rob from Guggen? No. <laughs> okay, okay. That Rob, right, this, right. this, that Rob's my boy. All right, you're cool, bro. You're cool, bro. <laughs> this Rob's my boy. So we, uh, you know, you only need ten minutes on the flat to catch over, you know, ten to ten to thirteen pounds. Oh hell yeah! You know, that's three sure. bites up there. Right. You know, you get three bites up there, and then it, and You're good. you know you have. I mean, are we sure they ran to the flat though, and not to like the sacks or something like that? Ten pounds is a check in the Thursday nighters, though. No, ten I'll pounds I'll is a check in the Thursday. I'll tell you after yeah. all day. Yeah. So, that? did anyone? I mean, I said ten pounds is a check in the Thursday nighter all day. <laughs> every, I think every tournament. <laughs> every tournament. I think this. I think the one or two last year. Yeah. Yeah, there might have been. There might have. I know the one that Logan and Tyler won. 
Uh, they there was like there, they had thirteen, something. and there was a couple of ten pound yeah. bags in that, yeah. you know, behind that. But we got third. Me and but you could, what, what a, basically my point is you don't Logan you don't Tyler necessarily are just gunpowder sticks. Yeah, they are. So you don't necessarily and I and I know where they were fishing too, and that wasn't you know in the you know, that was that was Un, something up to, onto onto itself. Yes, hundred um, percent. Hundred percent. You know, the, and, and the credit one that to I them for figuring it out. Honestly. The one, the one that I won, we didn't have a boat around us all night. Mm -hmm. The the closest was Miles, and he was a hundred yards away. Yeah. Uh, you hit know, that hit that like and share button if you're enjoying our podcast or our so, live stream. Hit that button. Appreciate it. You know, so you can you can win these you can win these tournaments doing your own thing. You don't have to fish where everybody else is fishing, yeah. and you know they're the reason the fish were so concentrated this year is because there were no grass. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that certain areas were very good. Hopefully it's a lot better next year. If there's grass, ne if the grass comes up next year, like it did a couple of years ago, you won't see that happening again. Yeah. Right. Um, because those fish spread out too much. Now you might see it later in the, later in the season, you'll, you'll see that same kind of thing happen um, depending on how much rain we get and stuff like that. But you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables to it, but I mean, you know, for that matter, you know, John Hansen went to the pond, you know, and him and Steve won. You know, they they just went back to the pond and did their You know you what? Know, I'm not going to lie. Two of my, like, really close friends that I love dearly went back there and they won. I was so butthurt when that happened. Oh, I'm stung. telling you, dude. Stung didn't. Because it, it does dude, sting. It, it, it does. stung because I go back there with it's Scuba like, Steve. It's like your tournament like, partner just, in your yeah, favorite place to exactly. fish. Exactly. <laughs> my tournament partner in my favorite place to fish where I have the most confidence. And then I went back there and zeroed and then got smoked by him and John. And mm -hmm. I was just like. He probably could have rode to the flats in the same amount of time. I mean, so I that was a. Dude, that's the fastest boat I've ever been on. That oh, thing is fast like, shit. Just by wait. the time that you run around, you just gotta wait. idle all the way back into the pond. I'm not trying to shit myself. In it a does. Boat. I, mean, I sent my like, ECU to get flashed. To go to the pond? You did not. Mm hmm. It Fox takes you. Just as long. Two or three hundred. It, it, takes, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, takes, okay. it takes almost 40 minutes to get back to the pond. Like if you're yeah, following all the speed limit, yeah. if you're following, it, 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 if you're a law-abiding citizen, honestly, yes. God, it takes it. It takes. If you're following long, tournament rules, yeah. I mean, and I can be in, I can be in the flats in forty minutes in my boat, right? Yeah. You know, now, if you it, had it a take bullet me, that was I could get to the flats. I, I could run to the flats in my in my champion in the same amount of time it would take me to get. To Here's the all I'm telling is you: it if it's forty gone. minutes or is it like twenty five? No, it's so forty it's, counting the idle out of the canal, so from the ramp. So you have to idle out, and you, you so idle you have to idle out. The way down, you you all run over the to the duck line, and then you have to idle all the way back. So, God. so it's yeah, it's seven minutes uh, if you're going six mile an hour. That's forty and forty. It's seven That's minutes. That's the whole entire. Trip. Pretty much, pretty much. So it's seven minutes from the ramp to where you can take off. It's four minutes if you're running balls out. Four minutes from there to the duck line, uh, and then it's. To from the duck blind all the way back to the pond is like twenty two minutes. Yeah, yep. going six miles an hour. So well, look, most of the time you can't. You. And most of the time you can't go six mile an hour. Watch why it takes so long. Yeah. You can pro you can probably go six mile an hour. Yeah, you got to go because slow. your boat your boat doesn't draft as yeah. much. But like in a glass boat, uh, uh, you got going plan. across going across uh, Days Cove ninety percent of the time I can't do six mile an hour. No. Here's all I'm gonna tell you: if it's you guys see three, me on Thursday. Like Three and a half. To three four. and a half. Yeah. If you guys see me on Thursday, show up in the bullet. I ain't fishing local. I'm running. <laughs> I'll run oh, out of the chop. You missed that motherfucker. Craig, you missed the you missed the rock bass conversation. Uh, Craig's coming. Interested to hear about the rock bass, only because I caught a freak one out of Liberty Reservoir, fifty-five to sixty foot deep, also in freezing cold with a blade bait. Seymour. Um, I've already read that far. Click Seymour. <laughs> Kept because we knew it was a state record between 2.34 pounds. Holy shit. Dude, honestly. And right. this Sadly is... took home and froze with plans of taking next day to official scale. God damn. So here's it. the thing. But never that did. That would have had the, the that non-title. Non yeah, non-title. So I don't almost know for a, sure. Almost a whole pound. It was yeah. a whole pound. So, a whole pound. Yeah. Wow. Was one point three. And, and, this is, and this, is not to, this is not to discount Tom's catch at all, but I think so many people that know what rock bass are catch big woods and they're just like, oh, fuck this thing. Just throw it away. <laughs> like, they don't ever think. It's like, yeah. oh, this could be a state yeah. record because no, it's Rob, like, it's like catching be, a white perch. We, like, might be, we might be able to do something, Rob. I don't know. We'll see. 
snake only tournament? Yeah. That'd be interesting. I would I call we, like three we can definitely talk about that. Um we're definitely like talking about all year. doing one or two tournaments in the spring with Bass and Beer Radio. We'll let this guy run that one. We're gonna do a couple spring tournaments. Does that mean I can't um, No, <laughs> you can <finish> it. <laughs> <laughs> John, me, me and Dad uh, the, hit a gator one time at Headwaters. The, the spring tournaments are are definite. Um, I'm thinking about maybe throwing a John Boats only tournament. Oh hell yeah! I don't have a John Boat. Yeah, I don't so, either. I have so one. So it cuts a, it cuts a lot of people out. Can I just fish with you? Like, hey, that's what I mean, I'm trying to say. Man. Well, no, 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 no. You cannot fish with Tom. No. Look, we fished together before. It's not like it's something. No. Weird. I have a spare John. You fished together with the middle. With, okay, this is best to be a radio. Technically, your range no. is a John boat. It just has a deck. I mean, it's the same it thing. It's aluminum. I ain't gonna lie. I felt I feel like uh, Tom's butthole puckered a little bit when I was running my glass boat through like six inches of water. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's different when you're going 25 and you're going 60. Dude, I mean, I we cannot wait. Like, you're gonna hit something. You're gonna hit something. I can't wait. Like I cannot wait till you but guys get to ride my boat. 25 and hitting it at double the speed of 25 is different. Someone's going to give. Tom was like, yeah, there's a little area back here that's about two feet deep. I was like, that's all I need. I, I was balls out right to that spot. <laughs> I can't wait till I, I like I can't wait to see Chad's reaction the first All time. All Carolina skiffs are welcome. My reaction. Yeah, because I, I like I said, I'm getting I'm getting glass reeds. I'm getting the head. I'm here shaved. to tell you right now, I'm not getting in that boat, bro. That thing's gonna. <laughs> oh yeah, gonna I'm not be getting a, in that boat. It's I'm gonna be a 95 mile an hour boat. Like, yes, yeah, no so tracker. I'm not getting in that boat. A tracker grizzly does count as a John boat. That thing is going to be wicked. It's going Absolutely. to be insane. Dude, I so uh, th- this it. makes me confident, dude. I feel like we definitely need to do a John Boat only tournament. Can I have Rule, rules, for, rules for the John Boat tournament? Your boat can't have carpet. <laughs> There's no carpet in the boat. Good, because I have whatever that. You have Sea Deck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And it sucks only... because I have to be back for weigh ins and I have to video everything. But so. you only have Sea Deck on the front, too. So <laughs> That's one of the other things. I got to try to make it back so, like, I almost have to try to leave five to ten minutes earlier than everybody else to try to make it back to the Thursdays because I need to have my filming set up better this year. Mm, yeah, it's got to. I got to have things fil- set up better. I got to have better. Miles, that's this year. that is acceptable. Get set up. Why don't you just? Can't you just like set it up beforehand? I mean, like everybody. Yeah, I'm. I'm definitely. Time. I got to talk to Scott and some of the guys and see if they'll be willing to look after some of my equipment while I'm away. But yeah. I want to get a light, like we have here, right. give us better lighting, a camera, and then I would like Scott to wear a microphone, and I would like uh, Jay Jay to wear a microphone. As they throw the fish on the uh, on the scales. There you go. So Two point six more pound crappy out of Conowingo. All I'm saying is like for Conowingo or for for the Thursday there are definitely nighters, some big ones up there. I want to have I want the Stone Cold Steve Austin theme song to hit when I'm no. walking up there with my bag. <laughs> We're not I, playing the Stone what? Cold Steve Austin theme for you to walk up with like three pounds. Okay, what, first wait, hold up. What whoa. theme do you want? What theme do you want? Yeah, what theme? theme. You need a theme. What theme you, do you want? If you could pick one, which one would it be? Just, yeah, exactly. If you could pick one, what theme would you would you go with? Theme song? Rick Astley, never going to give you up. Dude, <laughs> get out. Just yes! <laughs> I'm never going to give you up. Never going to let, let you down. down. I would never stop fishing if there's any. Never around <laughs> and hurt you. Never going to make you cry. Never, never going to say goodbye. You just Rick rolled 11 people. We did. Like, come on now. Live. Never gonna tell a lie. <laughs> right. Hurt you. Rob said buy a ring. <laughs> just, just buy a ring camera and put it on the gazebo. There you go. <laughs> Dude, it's ideal. It's ideal. We're thinking about everything. We're thinking about different stuff. We want to upgrade. We want to do better this year. We want to get more followers and uh, just have have some more people to uh, get in here on these conversations. Um. We're not looking to make a profit or anything like that. Everything that we ever make on our events, we we want to roll it back into yeah. you doing giveaways and stuff. Actually, we have a lot of stuff uh, piled up right now to do more giveaways in the future. We're just looking for that for that right time to do so. And, now, uh, if you keep liking and sharing and we get like 100,000 followers, we might take a little bit of money. You know what? That's our big thing. <laughs> That's our big thing. Uh, if you guys, The more that you guys like and share, the more interesting things that we can do we can do more giveaways with you guys we can get more pros on here to talk to you guys and do more q a's 
Um, it all depends on you guys liking and sharing um, yeah, the our more, live streams. The more that you guys help us out by liking liking and sharing, the more the the, the more content that we can bring you. The more we uh, get the, noticed in our community. The better quality content we can bring you. You know, we that Giggity. that Matt Heron episode last week was awesome. It was I, fantastic. I, I was I was I was a little sad that I wasn't here, but then I called twenty two pounds the next day, and I was. <laughs> did you rewatch? Did you rewatch the episode? I mean, no. I watched the last half. I, I watched the last half of it. It was though, good. Though. Yeah, it it was, was good. It was really good. He seemed. He seemed it was like cool. I think my favorite so far. I gotta say, David Fritz has been sure. phenomenal. I loved the David Fritz. Like David good. Fritz melted my brain that night when he came. Took over. everything that you know and just like, throw it in the trash. I think I think like dude, I went back and I rewatched it and I was like, you can see my brain start to melting start melting. Like, what? Now. See I, I, I was a little more prepared for that because I've I've sat through like one of his seminars. Right. He was at Susquehanna Fishing Tackle a few years ago, and like I sat through a seminar, so I, I got my brain melt back then. Yeah. <laughs> so but I that's was, what I, we're I looking for. Expecting. I, I'm looking for but. that brain melt. Can I have your no. Well, it's like last last weekend in SFT when KVD was there. It wasn't much of a seminar for me. It was more just like a, hey, this is a KVD bait. Hey, right. was, here's a lose reel. So, did you watch any of the other seminars? We did not. So, um, I, I kind of, I, I kind of did expect that from from KVD yeah. because I've seen some of his seminars before. Um, yeah, I mean, you can get some cool, good information. You can get some good information from him, but yeah. um, watch if you're up there again. Watch like Greg De Palma's. There was. Oh, oh, you can still kind of see it. Did you sign your hat? Yeah. Oh, is that the <laughs> hat? Yeah. Is that the hat? Hold on. You can barely see it on there. It says KVD on it. <laughs> I don't think I don't think it's gonna show. It's up. in black sharpie on show. a blue hat. Yeah, black sharpie <laughs> on a blue hat. Not gonna oh, show. I'm trying to move it. Well, like he was walking it's out. It's not there. It says KVD on the hood on the uh, no, somewhere yeah. right there. Yeah, I can Mar- see it. Martin's I mean, right. I, can see it. I know Hold it's up. there. It's right here. Yep. Hold up. So Greg De- Greg De Palma and Gray Buck put do yeah. really really good like educational seminars. Well, oh, I can cut. You can there it is. There it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It on there. It's for sale for a hundred dollars. Some other uh, <laughs> for the faded hat, one hundred dollars. There's some other. <laughs> I, I've seen some other good seminars up there. Um, Smallmouth Saturday last year. Derek Hudnall was there. Oh, that was that was a pretty good seminar. Yeah. Um, talked a lot about. He talked about using not. A, you know, we all. The biggest thing that I learned from him was. You know, we all know the line size will affect like your bait depth, right? Yeah, right. He so he talked about how rod action will also change your bait depth, um, and then explained how he did that in a Florida tournament that same year, huh. uh, fishing jerk baits, and how because he switched from a fast action rod to a moderate action rod, it made his jerk bait not not go quite as deep. Yeah. So yeah, that you know that was a really cool one. Uh, like you know, GDP and Gray Buck always give good seminars. Um, uh, George, when George does seminars, George's I heard seminar. Him talking about that. The, George's uh, George's last night. Yeah, George's seminars are always yeah. good. Um, George George is a phenomenal angler. Um, hey, what's up, Brian? George was a. Um, a lot of people don't know this. One, George has fished two Bassmaster Classics. Oh, really? Um, the owner of Susquehanna Fishing Tackle, or one of the okay, others, one right, of the brothers, yep. George. Um, he's fished two Bassmaster Classics. Um, he has he fished professionally uh, in the '90s. He fished the like the Bassmaster. It was like the top 150. He fished that for like two years. Um, but George is a phenomenal fisherman, uh, and really, really knows what he's talking about. Uh, which is one of the reasons that I go up there so much is oh, yeah. because it, like if you need to know something. Uh, you know, if you're you're trying to get into a, a new technique or something like that, George oh, knows about it, breed. and he will tell you every. You know, that they don't hold anything back. Yeah. They, you know, with their tackle shop lives, and uh, if you go into the store, they don't hold anything back. Yeah. It's not like talking to like a guy at the ramp who you know is you know trying to keep not a secret. You, you know, not going to tell you everything. You know, yeah. he might tell you, called him on a spinner bait, but he yeah. was really you know throwing a popper. Yeah. You know, George is going to tell you everything that you need to know. Um, I know when uh, when we went to the St. Lawrence a couple years ago, uh, our, our buddy Clint, um, who had never drop shot it in his life, 
never owned a spinning rod. Yep. <laughs> went to yep. Sus- went to Susquehanna Fishing Tackle, and George walked around the store with him, and and you know got him a, a good setup for a drop shot rod. Right. Showed him all the baits that he needed to take with him up there. You know, got you know got him a good selection of baits to throw. Uh, got him set up with hooks and weights. You know, everything that he needed was you know George, George got him set up. You know, and he's. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like I said, George, George is a phenomenal fisherman, uh, and one of the reasons that I that I love going up there so much. I mean, where else can you go locally that has that, that kind selection. of selection Nowhere. and the support behind it? Nowhere. Yeah, true. Not for bass fishing. I mean, yeah. the it, Tockerman's it, you know, is a yeah, great yeah. shop Some locally, but stuff. it's that's in the that's in the city, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's mm-hmm. in Fells or Eastern Canton. Eastern Avenue, Canton, Canton or something? Canton, like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, See you, John. Um, so yeah. you know, you know, going up there, like you can just get if you're hey, looking. Good night, spe- buddy. If you're looking specifically for bass fishing, like there's no place around that oh, yeah, you're going to get that much information. Oh yeah, hell no. Um, I've I mean, been in some good tackle shops throughout the country. Yeah. I, I've never been. I've never been in one that's as helpful as they are. Right. It's not like it's a huge store either. I mean, it's not like you're walking in a Bass Pro or no, something. No, but like it's that. Cr- it's got. A better they selection of stuff than Bass Pro. You said they got something going imagine. on up there tomorrow? They have a big sale. Yeah, it was like a flash sale. I, Smallmouth Saturday? Mm-mm. That's not until February. I say this fuckers. weirdly without ever being there, but I really enjoy their shows and their shop, and I've never been to it. I've only been there you once. I up there last weekend. I just, do. I know what it was going to be. I knew it was going to be a shit show, yeah. and I just, it you know. Bad. You know, obviously they, they collaborated it and did everything yeah. very, very well, but... It just, yeah. it interests me, yes. I just don't feel like spending the time to go do it. It's just not my thing. You there's, probably there's other things. There's other things for me to do it. around my house. Yeah, yeah the, I, so I don't go up there for the seminars too much because I don't yeah. like being in, like, I just Crowds. don't like sitting in a big crowd like yeah. that. I, it's just not, that's just not my thing. But, you know, I definitely go up there and spend a crap ton of money. I think between, on Small mouth Saturday a couple of years ago between three of us we spent like forty five hundred dollars. Holy oh crap! Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was pretty intense. Wow. <laughs> oh, Mr. Brian said uh, Psycho Saturday sale tomorrow. That's what yeah, it was. thanks Brian. Saturday. Damn, Psycho I might go up there at uh, SFT. Yeah. Then I might go up there. Uh, I don't think they sell Falcon Rod, Sean. Um, I, Brian, if Brian Setlock is listening, he may be able to tell you that. But I don't think they sell falcon rods. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, like St. Croix, Shimano, um, G. Loomis. Do they have Ardent and Ducket up there? No. no. Neither? No, because they don't sell junk. <laughs> <laughs> Brian said no falcon. Skadoosh. Okay, yeah, what about carrot sticks? So. I got any of those? No. <laughs> I have three. Yeah, look, four, everything three, I think four, everything Tony Arden says, Brian is just going to say no to. I love the Arden Reels, dude. Love them. Love them. Do you have any it, carrot sticks, though? I think that's what oh makes me laugh so much about it. He's just like, do they have this rod? Everybody's no. like, no, mother, no mofo. Is like, mayonnaise an instrument? This. Yeah, exactly. Is Thank you, Rob. Do not buy Ducket. Did I haven't bought a ducket terrible, rod in like six years? Terrible rods. I bought ducket rods when I first started fishing, and they were good until every hey. single freaking eyelet that I've ever had broke off of them. You oh, got yeah, one right sure. there. I've offered the, to buy it from you a hundred times, and you won't sell it. The thing about ducket That's is... fixed from Mr. Tom. I'm never getting rid okay, of that. Okay, ducket. Enough, ducket enough. is a... Fair ducket's enough. a good rod until you use something else. Does okay, that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, like, if you're like, you get into bass actually. fishing, you say, "Oh, sense. well, boy, Duckett, you know, he's a pro angler, and he, you, you know, know so this must be a good rod." Anything sure. Duckett beats anything Shakespeare, or oh yeah, anything I lower mean, level Abu Garcia. Oh, for sure. Lower but level you're also, Abu is also junk. I feel like you're looking at a different price point. Actually, I have a. But that's what I'm looking. at. I'm looking at what you have in like Dicks and Walmart, and it's all shit. I ain't gonna lie. Until you get to like Duckett, when then it's like. I bought Candace. I bought Candace and okay, Abu maybe. and Abu Vengeance spinning rod, medium heavy spinning rod. They're decent. It's not if for an eighty dollar rod, yeah, not bad. No, that, I mean she loves it. She like, loves it. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's an eighty dollar rod. It, she loves that rod. I I've used it. I like that rod. Now yeah. what, wait a minute. What about the uh, like? What do you guys? What's your opinion on thirteen fishing? 
Like I'm not a fan. I mean, so I, I will tell you that I've used anything from 13. Um, so I bought I've a, heard a lot That's of a lie. Of I've used reels. one crankbait yeah. from them and it's okay. I have one it's rod and reels. I have just one, rod and reels. I, no, so I have one 13 fishing them. reel um that I it, it's given me I've had it for a few years and I I've it, it's on my flipping rod so like it's been It's been abused. It's, it's been abused. abused, and abused. Um on my like heavy my my punching rod too. My like oh, yeah. never cleaned so, like it's been it's been abused and I have some issues with that. Um, I had a couple of uh, I bought a couple of probably th- four <laughs> thirteen fishing uh, envy black rods four um, because they were on a retarded sale at Dick's yeah. one it, they were they were like forty nine dollars a piece it was oh, like that's cheap it was like buy one get one free um, and He's putting it up his nose. Uh, I, so they the envy black it's like um, minty. I don't know what chatterbait rod like. was a Cold really bait. really good chatterbait rod. Um, it was a medium. It was a medium heavy, moderate fast, uh, seven seven foot three or seven foot one. Uh, great chatterbait rod. Steve, um, you say you run all concept reels. How do you like the concept reels? I've looked into the thirteen fishing reels before. Um, most of my reels are. He's a, he's I think a, mine's a concept A. Most this of my reels are up it's to fine. I mean, it, it, most of my like reels said, are up to date for what I want to use them for. I keep on finding myself wanting to update my swim bait reels. So, so it's not to be oh, to be fair. He's got an not the same. Denny Brower. Dude, I have that man. I broke mine, and they sent me. So my Denny Brower Arden flipping stick. I br- actually I didn't break. Craig, thanks for Somebody joining us, brother. I fished with Hope to see you again. Stepped soon. on that motherfucker. And I ended up, they replaced it. And, like, that's the best thing. I will say, like, the reason, the biggest reason I stay loyal to Arden is because their customer service Dial is baby. fantastic. That's what I'm talking about. Have you ever had, you've dealt with their customer service before. Um, yeah, one of the, yeah. One of the reels. Tim, but, Tim Thompson, I think his name is. That might have been who I talked to. But excellent. I, I pulled the real handle, like the handle itself, out mm-hmm. of the carbon frame, I guess. They sent me another one in the mail, like, two days later. Oh, dude, their, like, their customer no service question, is awesome. Like, I sent them a picture of it. Done. Oh yeah. One time, I actually took. I've just a reel. never had problems with my diver. I took a reel yeah, apart. Me, <laughs> me neither. I took a reel apart to clean it. The reel was four years old, completely out of warranty, and I was like, it was a spinning reel. One of the bearings came apart. I was like, shit, I can't get this back together. Yeah. I took. I sent a picture. I was like, look, I just need the bearing. I took it apart. The bearing kind of fell apart. I can't get it back together. They said, okay, we'll get it to you. Sent me a whole new reel. I'm yeah, like, that's Jesus because their Christ. reels cost them like thirteen dollars. Sure, but it, I still use that reel though. <laughs> like I still use the reel, and the other one is I have for spare parts. Yeah. Like, I look at it this way: like if you, if they, if they can, if they can give them to you at a fifty percent discount, they're making they're still easy. making money off of off of their their pro staff. Yeah. Sure. So you know it costs them very little to make that. It probably costs them less. As far as time goes, to just send you a new reel than to look up what bearing they use. Oh yeah, that's, I mean that's what it boils down to: how much time that they're spending on it. And but I, I mean, I've had some. I I ran. I've ran a couple of ardent reels. I, I, the durability is not great. Um, on their low, the on their lower end, it, the apex grand, not the apex grand, the the apex, the black, the the lightning, the black and red one. That's the pro apex pro. Uh, yeah, seven three to one apex pro series. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's, have, they don't like even make them three, anymore. Yeah, they don't I make have them three anymore. Three of the apex grands, the white ones. Yeah, those are really nice. They're really fantastic. Nice. I love it. Really nice. Yeah. The seven, the six five is too slow. I mean, even for like a crank around. Sean, do you have any of the? Me, do you have any of the new zillions? They did replace. Oh, the zillions are so nice. Dude, I love my. It, it, the lightning. It, when I was using the I, it hurts run. me so bad. The like, cast if I had an unlimited out. amount of money, I would. That's the only reel that I would run. I did just get one of the the Summit Hawk, the uh, the lightweight. I, I do have two of them. I do it's not really like nice. the tuning of Lou's. I don't like tuning Lou's reels. So that's what I like about the Arden reels, dude. Is I like did just buy Lou's out of the box. <laughs> out I of just the, don't like. I'm just not. Some of their like, new ones I'm are. not a Lou's fan as far as like the tuning the reels. Like some of their new Shimano and Daiwa. And so that's about it. I just got a. You know what I love about Daiwa? Jig flipping setup. I was torn between getting a Daiwa flipping reel and a lose flipping reel. I ended up buying a lose. I haven't caught a fish on it yet because I bought it in December. Is it their? Is it their like flipping skipping reel? Flipping though, that only holds yeah, like fifty yards yeah, of line. Yeah, the shallow spool. 
Yeah. Is, I mean, the, is the spool feels... narrow or is it shallow? shallow. It's, no, it's wide and shallow, so yeah. it only holds. About, like, so you can skip. It's like so that it's not for flipping. Has it's that a real a... narrow yeah. one that where yeah. you can just like control the sides with your thumb. I love yeah. that thing, dude. Yeah. I have three of them. Probably See, the only thing I don't like about that is it sounds like a freaking airplane is taking off. It's too specific. It's too specific. That's the issue. It is. It is. You know, because you can only use it for one thing. Like, <laughs> like with that reel, like you know, you can at least ca- you know you can you can cast. I mean, you only got fifty yards of line, but yeah, you still make it. You can still cast. You can you can cast. You can skip. You can yeah. flip. You know, so yeah. I, I mean, I run dial. The best thing about dial is uh, the SVTW. Uh, like I can literally go from a throwing a quarter ounce jig to a three quarter ounce jig and not have to touch a reel side. Yeah. We'll see how it works out, though. So, I mean, it's I, insane. I got that. I haven't caught a fish on it yet, but I get. I got to do. Uh, seven, I mean, it's good for seven, skipping. Six heavy, uh, jig rod. I, I would love that for skipping, like yeah. because you you know even like as good as I can. I mean, I'm a. I can skip a jig pretty well. You yeah. still backlash every now and then. Oh yeah. It's you happen. know, you hit something. You hit dock piling or something like that. So, well, you know, sometimes if you I get say you do there. not backlash when you skip a jig, you're lying right to somebody's face. That's why you use a spinning reel. Yeah, I, I, I the, those tattoos. <laughs> me, me and Martin are definitely all in on the on the tattoos. They're they're insane for skipping. You know what? And my I zillions, thought... uh, my zillions that I have on my jerkbait rods are fucking retarded. <laughs> Do you remember what when I asked you about Daiwa? I kind of thought you were going to be skeptical about going to a Tatula. I remember oh, no. what, you Best went fucking to a Tatula three years ago. Yeah. Best thing I. Ever I remember did. when we talked about it. And I was like, because I had went to a Tatula too, and I was like, I wonder how Paul will feel about going to the Tatula. Today, Junior. I'll put it this way: I liked it. I liked it so well. I the first time that I bought one was when I went to Texas. Um, it was before, right before I went to Texas. Uh, I bought it right after Christmas. Frank was going to Texas in January. Mm-hmm. I shipped all my stuff down with oh, him. There's a free zillion on the bottom of the GP somewhere. Damn! There's Ouch. a god damn Martin. There's a there's a tattoo SVTW on the. You know what? Somebody the, will catch that one day and have no idea what they just saw. So, They'll just be like, "Oh, look at this piece of shit." There's Dude. an SV there's an SVTW underneath the dock in the northeast. I did not get that lucky, but in like November, I pulled a fresh Zebco. Oh, nice. <laughs> it was probably Nate Brown's. It so, had like four <laughs> fluorescent. Models. So anyway, it was so <laughs> so my story about the tattoo is so I bought this reel in in December. I shipped it to Texas with Frank because he was going down there to pre practice. Yeah. Um, because and I was gonna I'm, I was flying down there for the tournament. Um, so I shipped all my stuff down with him. So I never got to throw it. Too loud for you. The first time the first time I threw it was when I was in Texas. I came back home, uh, went to Smallmouth Smallmouth Saturday the f- following weekend and bought three more. I mean, I dropped nine hundred. I think I spent nine hundred, like nine hundred and fifty dollars at that Susquehanna fishing tackle. I bought, I bought three reels and a rod. God damn! See, like, if you're prepared to like go up there like three months in advance to know that, like, I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna drop a grand when I go up there. Like, dude, that's a good day. I expect. But when you go up there and you're just like, I'm gonna go up there and spend a couple hundred bucks, and then you walk out of there with a thousand dollars worth of shit, you're like. That's what happened when yeah. I bought my. That's what happened when I bought my first zillion. They didn't have. I wanted a. I, I wanted a different reel, and uh, I, that was at Smallmouth Smallmouth Saturday. I'm talking to Jason Shea, and well, he's a guide up on the on the Susquehanna, and he's he's sponsored by Daiwa, so he always works the Daiwa counter for him. Right, right. And he's like, he's like, dude, tra- check out the zillion. And I put that reel in my You're hands. Way and out I was, of the camera. T- oh, there you go. I put that reel in my hands, and I was like, man, I hate you. <laughs> yeah, dude, like. Right. So I ended up buying a uh, a Saint Croix Victory and a Zillion that day. Ooh, yeah, yeah that, so was that was a bill. That was I a mean, bill. that right there was it was three. What the Zillion's three sixty nine. Three you know? and then three mm, and then two ten two fifty or three two ten for the rod two ten. See if you just that's just, a combo like, stick right the cheap under. stuff. You but don't like, know what's good? That's what I, I do. Know, see, I just like, cheap, you know, I gotta stuff. say though, like the amount of the problem there, is there once is, you once you buy don't try it. Once you once you try one, I, I did it. I told uh, you know my my buddy Ken Barry who fishes in my club. You know you always fish with like your like cheap bait caster, like right, right. your your forty fifty dollar reels. 
Um, and one day he was like, man, I think I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy a better combo. They got these, uh, you know, Shimano SLX on, on sale. I, I'm going to get a couple of them. I was like, dude, you should, you should totally get that. I mean, they're good reels. I'll yeah. definitely get it. I talk, I talk him into buying it and he's like, Paul, I hate you. I was like, why? I was like, there goes two grand. I was like, cause, cause <laughs> now I'm going to have to replace all my rods with these because you were absolutely right. When you get a better quality bay caster. Yeah. Like now, the Apex grants are they're really the, good reels. The so, casting, ab- the casting you're, abilities of a high quality reel, absolutely surpasses the ability of something that is <laughs> mid tier to low quality. Rob, Rob went into Bass Pro to get some get some personal lures and spent four hundred dollars. Yep, <laughs> that is yep. me. <laughs> When yep. that is, that like, is oh, me. went to the jerk section and was like, oh, there's a bunch of Vision 110s right so, here. So, like, <laughs> so Sean, the, the new Zillions, the, the Zillion uh, SVTW is amazing. I can throw, I, I, be, I can always spool. So, is the SVTW, a Vision is that just a sure. different ratio? No, so the SVT, the, it's a, the SV spool with their, uh, the, the, what's T-wing. the SV spool? It's a light, it's a lighter spool. Okay. So it casts faster. All right. Uh, so lighter spool. It's not quite as deep. Uh, holds a little bit less line, but it's a it's a lighter spool for faster spool speeds. You can get you. You just get a farther cast out. Plus it. Yeah. Plus it has their zero adjust and, and uh, their oh, pat, whatever their that patent, door Tony. Yeah. Whatever their patented braking system is. It's not. It's not like electronic like the DCs are. Um, yeah. But there, it's an air brake system, and that thing is freaking ridiculous. Wait, it, it's. You don't backlash them very much at all. Um, I, you know, if you're, if I would say that if I'm not casting in wind, I will not backlash that rod, that those reels. You know, I have to be, if I'm casting, I have to be casting like into the wind to get a backlash. In um, reels. They're I gotta say, I throw a, uh, I have a Mega Bass, Mega Bass Yuga, Mega Bass Yuga. Yuga. A Yuga. The Mega Bass Yuga is a finesse. Um, casting, casting rod uh, from quarter to three eighths, something like that. That's, it's, that's like a medium. It's it, it probably goes a little lower than quarter. Lighter, it's right. yeah. it's a very light. It's like a, a very light, light casting rod. Is that the one that we uh, that you put the uh, eighty on? The eighty on. Yeah, yes, the, the and I put a Tatula eighty on it. Phenomenal. Good, yeah, it feels phenomenal great. Phenomenal rod. It I is, feel like that would be really good. I can good. throw anything down from those finesse crankbaits or a finesse, even a finesse jerkbait that I want to throw, even down to like a small little finesse uh, paddle tail if I want to throw it. Right. But it's, you know, oh. being able to throw that Look. on a casting Look. setup. You want, to, you want to know what else is It's very great? beneficial. One, it's a tool of 80. They just dropped the tool of 80. What was it? Two? Two last year. Two it was two last years. Year. Let me ask you a question. Year. Like, and the eighty is great. Let me ask it you a question. It casts phenomenally. How many in people? The wind, everything. How many people have you seen throw a frog further than me? <laughs> I mean, me and my tattoo elite that can cast every bit of braid off of it. What is it? Accurate? No one. Okay, thank you. So, no one. Thank you. Paul doesn't. I'm, I'm going to say it right here live. Paul doesn't cast farther than you. <laughs> Sorry. Just saying. He doesn't. We you can, don't cast farther than Tony. We can comp. We can. We can comp that out. You know what? Let's that is going to happen. We were going to go we'll out on Casting the bay, and we are going to have a cast competition live we on should. Bass and Beer Radio. We should. Oh my! This is making my dick hard. Well, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah! What, what I length, like it. What length rod do you use? Seven six. All right. I'll, I'll. As long as we use the same length rod. I like yeah, it. Absolutely. This will be a course, good time. Of course. Same my length frog, rod. My, my typical frog rod seven, no, is 7.3, seven so no, obviously you know you're Dude, It's like time. straight up. You know what's crazy to me? Tony's reel sounds like it is going to explode in his hand and take all his fingers off. Oh, that's be- that's the bearings? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's because I'm working. Hold up, but like, hold up. That's oh, what I was going to say. It to keeps be fair, going, though. And to be it fair, keeps Rob, going. <laughs> um, I will, Rob, Rob said um, on there. Yeah, Rob can, Rob can throw a frog farther than I can. That dude can bomb a frog. It's crazy. I'm just trying to say, it sounds like this reel is going to take his fingers off when it blows oh, up. Actually, Martin, that but is a great idea. Going. Like a, a like a punt, pass, and kick. So, it, it, like Ooh. a 
a like a cast pitch and skip competition. Yes. God damn. Yes. Let's, yes. Yes. Let's do it, boys. Yes. Let's do yeah. it, boys. We should yeah. do that. Do it, we boys. Do that. We should so do like, that. Be all can like, we come live from like Sand Island? Oh yeah. We can far the, like, oh, so, yeah. Set up. so far the Absolutely. farthest cast, and then uh, you know most accurate. <laughs> Bass and be ready. I was looking Sand into with a big cast. All with a big caster. You can't skip with a spinning rod. But no you cheeks. get. But you no get cheating, three, Nate. But you get three rods. Nate's disqualified. One one rod set different up for each. Yeah, you can do it. You can use a different rod. Sure. Oh, but I. I know, like you must be specifically talking about throwing our depth. No, that's all I right. own. Oh, of course, that's what I'm trying to that. say. Like, yeah, yeah. duh. He can throw whatever he wants. It does. Like, I do though. Like, I straight up, I talk shit on our debt. Like, I think I talk shit on our debt all the time from Tony's rods because they sound like they're gonna explode. But they. But fly. every time I throw the freaking frog, his frog is ten foot farther than I can. We're throw. gonna, if not more. So what it's you, true though. Hold on, hold on. It's just like. But, so Chad, what rod? And then I got a fish one. What rod? <laughs> what rod are you throwing your frog on? I so can't. This is a very important question. It is very important. I can't question. even remember right now. Because Tony throws a little bit longer rod. Okay, so first off, you all, give you a you, bit all of you know me. None of my rods are shit reels. I have no, no, no shit not, rods or reels. I'm not talking about the reel. Rod length makes a big difference. I mean, if you look no, at... No, 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 no. Okay, I'm sorry. Listen, I'm, sorry. Listen, listen I'm throwing a uh, seven, seven foot six X pride. So you're throwing a seven six. Seven six So X he's throwing a seven six. Maybe you just can't cast. Damn. No, I can cast. <laughs> so I throw... I'm throwing a seven six X pride. I think I'm on a... Uh, I think I have a DC on it. Is it heavy? Fuck that DC. So my toad rod... I will tell you that ye, he will outcast you every time if you're throwing a DC reel. I'm not a DC. Those, those DC reels will not cast as far. I don't know. I, I like the DC reels. However, they're great. I, they're I good do, reels. They're but great I, reels. They're great reels. However, I will say that if you go to a different reel style, you can get farther cast out. So I'll throw. The DC reels are great if you fish windy applications. So my my toad rod is a 7 we don't talk, heavy. Rob, we don't, we don't we don't talk about though. skipping chatterbaits here. We don't. No, we don't. We don't okay. talk about skipping chatterbaits here. So my, I, I have two frog rods. I'll be, uh, I'll be honest. Paul doesn't talk about skipping chatterbaits. Apparently, my two frog rods. <laughs> I have a a seven foot. We don't six. talk about what trailers you put on a chatterbait to skip them. Let's talk about that. You don't talk about that. Zico. Okay, Paul said it. So my carrot stick. Nothing, nothing special. My carrot stick is a Zico. seven a seven six heavy. It's gonna break in half. Dude, I'm, it hasn't yet. One season. If it breaks in the middle of the competition, you don't get a do over. True. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. So, all right, that's like that's like my uh, popping frog. I'll be right back. My you know popping frog, slow moving baits, long casts. You know, working yeah. over a massive area. Now my my toad rods, moving baits. It's a seven three heavy, but it's a more moderate tip because I like that it's hook set. I like that hook set when it, with a moving bait. It's a little bit more forgiving if the fish doesn't have it. And I, I will 100% tell you I cannot throw that bait as far as on that 7-6 seven, that seven, heavy. I can launch it. Well, yeah. Like I mean, anytime you're throwing a longer rod. Right, but it, it's amazing. And the, tip has, the tip of the rod has a lot to do with it, too. Yeah. If you're throwing it on I mean, if it's a, st oh, if it doesn't have any tip to it, you're not going to cast it as far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of frogs are you throwing, though? What kind of weight? My normal frog on the 7-6 on the is a Terminator popping frog. They're pretty heavy. I mean, they're like 5 yeah. eights. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's 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 going. I mean, it's yeah. it's flying. Terminator frog, it has weight. I love a Terminator frog, dude. Sean's are, Sean's are a a six ten heavy for his frog run. I, he told me that before. It's crazy because he he's only five seven. <laughs> I mean, that's still crazy. Why wouldn't you throw a seven foot? It just works for him. Me and him have talked about it. We, we we've talked about we've talked about it about he he can bomb a frog too. I mean, he can throw a frog far with that rod. He can bomb it. He's he was throwing he was throwing traps with me one in one winter on on like a fucking six ten. I'm gonna and, tell you the reason why I, I like mean, this. just bombing that thing. But it's a trap. Like I can throw a chap like seventy five yards. The reason <laughs> the reason why I I like the fucking uh, seven six so much. Honestly, it's not even it's not for the casting. Although that is a benefit. It's for the it's for the hook set. You pick up so much more line. So if you listen to what I mean, more leverage. Listen to what Fritz, you know, Fritz told us, you know, the difference between, you know, like a, uh, like a 7-1 and a 7-3, you're going to cast, uh, you know, he said it, it, you're going to cast probably 10 to 15 feet farther with, with your rod being two inches longer. Mm -hmm. 
So. But at the same time, what are you sacrificing in accuracy? I mean, what if you're I'm bombing sorry. a frog? Like if you're bombing a frog on you know on mats where it's not really like super important. Like if you're just fishing like cheese mats, where Which you're you're just do. going, you know, right you're working the, the whole you're working the whole thing, you know, like in a in a clock pattern. It's not not as important. Versus where, like if I'm skipping a frog, yeah. you know, I like my seven. I, I fish a seven three heavy. That's and I can, degree, I can, it's, I can like skip the hell out of it. Perfect frog size, yeah. and I do love skipping a frog. I'll say more, Don't ask me. Don't more ask me. So my frog fishing is going to a specific. Oh, for sure. Hole point. Especially, edge, especially, especially with your snakehead fishing yeah. too, you know, because yeah, that's oh yeah. super, 100%. super important. Yeah, see, Accuracy I'm bombing is it, everything. Dude. I'm just bombing it. Like I pick a mat that's like the size of this room and just boom. If I get near it, I'm happy. Yeah, if you're throwing, like, I mean, if you're fishing mats like that, where you got to make those long casts, <laughs> you know, it's a, where it's more about covering water than it is about accuracy. Then yeah, yeah that that longer rod is, um, yeah. <laughs> he said because his rod tip always hits the water with a seven footer. You know, that's like it's very your your rod size is very crucial to, um, the size of human being that you are. Yeah. Rob, me and Rob were out on the fly. I mean, a seven three for me is like an eight foot rod. That's what I'm trying to say. Like a seven three <laughs> in the hands of somebody that's a little bit shorter, and you're just smacking the tip of that water every time you're yeah. trying to run a, a walking bait, a frog, or something. So, you know, it definitely inches count. And yeah. I think one of our interviews, I think Mister Mister David Fritz Very was true. one of the ones <laughs> that said that every inch of a rod counts in the action of what bait you're throwing. Are we still talking every about fishing? Inch. Cause Depending I agree. on so, your boat too, because I mean, my boat doesn't sit as high out of the water as some other people's boats do too. Your boat kind of sits higher than some people's boats, in my opinion. Paul's I mean, boat sits some, higher. Dude, there's some, dude, there's some bass boats that are like hella low to the water. In my it opinion. depends on if you're in the back or the front. Because <laughs> if you're in the back of my boat, you're pretty much on the water. Yeah. yeah, but the front of your boat's like way higher. Than, like even mine. Like the first time I got on the front of Paul's boat, I was like, God damn, dude, I feel like I'm two stories up on this thing. See everything. So, Oh so, yeah, Rob. That that brings up a good point about casting. To you know, we we're talking about casting distance here and why it's important. So me and Rob were fishing the flats one time, and it was summertime, and uh, we got us you know school stripers came like came in, and they're you know they're busting they're busting on the surface, and we oh, chased them around best. for a while. You had to wait. Like, you had to be able to cast far. Oh yeah. Because you they didn't know where so that fast. you didn't know where that school was coming up. So yeah. when they came up, you better be able yeah. to reach them. So it's it's very important to be able to cast. Uh, to cast a, a long distance, um, you know, with your your top of the rods, your frogs, whatever. Yeah. Don't let Tom fool you. He can cast a frog pretty far. I've, I've watched him. <laughs> it might not be Tony far, but he he can. We were bombing. We were bombing frogs one night back into this little like creek cut. <laughs> Which was hilarious because Tom was like, "Yeah, there should there should be a snakehead right there," and I'm like, "Where? Right here!" <laughs> Boom! <Always. laughs> Boom! It's like, "Yay! Hey, we won big snake! <laughs> we won big snakehead that night too." Oh, I can't wait for springtime. Yeah, me, no, yeah, me too. Dude, That's uh today. Today was like miserable because I'm just like. We didn't have nothing going on for work. So it's just snowing and nasty. I should like, we? every ten minutes, I'm looking out the window. I'm just like, this sucks. Yep. What do I do? Uh, we're just gonna like walk around circles in the house. <laughs> oh yeah. So Sean, uh, Sean makes a good point. You know, for co anglers that are fishing off the back of the boat, he had to downsize his rods because he fishes off the back of the boat. You know, which sits a lot closer to the water. True. Right. Yeah. It's a good point. You know, for you know, saying with walking baits, you know, his you know his rod tips hitting the water if he's on the back of the boat if he's throwing a seven foot rod. Yeah. You know, versus the front of the boat where you're sitting a, you're sitting a lot higher. You know how much of a financial burden that is. To just have to have different size rods because you have to fish off the back of the boat. Then, uh, if you had your own boat and you were to I fish don't. different size, like I don't know, that's a financial burden. If you want to ask me, I don't. I I it doesn't. I, I fish the same rods. I mean, I fish the same six rods all the time. You're a little the boat. taller. I am not much. Three inches. Three inches makes a big difference. Though, Three inches makes a big long. difference. Though. True. Ask True. Candace. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the air horn? Hit the air horn. That was so, a perfect moment. Like, wait, for hold it. up. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Rob. Dude, that's it's what I'm not as about. loud as it used to be. I gotta because, say. Well, didn't you turn it down? No, it's fine. It's I'm a, down. 
There you go. Yeah, Rob, I crankbait season can't get here fast enough. Yeah. I mean, it's crankbait season right now, but it's just a little tougher. If the wind would just stop for like one or two days, that'd no. be fantastic. No, just keep rolling. Hmm. Yeah, just, see, just keep on. You guys do that. On. Like December, once it hits December and past, D is for ducks. All right. Like goddamn. Like well, that, that's what we're doing, dude. I can respect. I can respect the duck hunting grind. I can no. respect it, but I love you guys it. are crazy. I can. I can dude, respect it. It's so much fun, radio. dude. It's I can so respect it, but dude, I, think I need it's... you here, Bass and Beer Radio, bro. <laughs> well, I'm here now. I can respect it, You're but I think you guys are because the trip got canceled, bro. I can respect it, but I think you guys are idiots. I'm yeah. not going. I'm not going to stand in cold ass water. I am an idiot. Hello. Dude, you'll you guys stand didn't on know top that by of now. A boat that has, it's it's all covered in ice and go catch a fish. Have you ever? Uh, okay, so I've done a lot of a lot of wintertime steelhead fishing. Do you ha- do you realize how cold waders are? Oh my god, bro. Yes, cold yes. as shit. Yes, cold. Way as colder shit. than standing on the deck of a boat. <laughs> cold when shit. you're in when right you're in. You. Thigh deep water, you know, thigh I've deep done water. It, it yeah. sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It doesn't suck. It, it, it sucks way worse than it sucks. Than standing dick. It Straight sucks up. Way worse than standing on the deck. It's of not a even bed. human penis. It sucks donkey <laughs> penis. Dude, I can, you know, I can put like, I can put like three layers on and throw like a pair. Of, I'm gonna tell you, know, you right now with a pair of snow you pants, and I'm good. We went like, out. No, I'm good. We went like, out on, last on Saturday. On a boat, yeah. We went out. We hunted last Saturday, and there it was blowing a little bit and there was a lot of spray as we were getting to the spot and i'm in the front of the boat with my flashlight and i got my my bock clava what kind on. of boat is it normally it's kevin's 16 17 foot sea arc or whatever but like there's spray and i'm wet and i got my face mask on and i'm holding my little flashlight dan it's it doesn't pitch matter black, whatever it's cold when the and, water's uh, when the water's like 34 so degrees cold. it's always cold oh, dude God. i get out of the boat and i like so i I wear my army issued wet weather gear because it's Gore Tex and it actually is is good shit. So like I'm I start moving and like my entire body is just a sheet of ice on the outside layer from the wet weather gear. I'm like this is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold, but this is cool, man. Like no, see I don't find anything cool about that. I don't know. It's a different. I so I've had hypothermia. I twice, can definitely so. talk. It's a different experience. It is definitely wild to walk out in that water and like. You're cold, but you're not like gonna die cold. You know what I mean? Like you're just kind of like tomorrow is going. You can be, you can make it like cold. I was supposed it, to hunt tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You I'm can probably. you can feel that the refrigerator is being kept on the outside, but it's there. You know what so I'm saying? Tomorrow is actually I hunt Blackwater a lot for sick of deer. Tomorrow is the last gun hunt of the season. Speaking to the microphone, boy. It is going to be a high of like 25 degrees down there. And Are you 40, going? Hell no. Oh, come on. I would oh, come on. 45 mile an hour gust, and you're in a pine tree this freaking big. Dude, that thing is back and wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you duck hunt ever? No. no. Have you ever, have you ever wanted you to try it? Dude, I bet you would love it. I bet you would love it. You know. would love it. Watch it. Watch, you, watch, watch me, you, and Tony go out and start smacking ducks next year. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I mean, I, I, I love shooting shit. I like that. I mean, it's definitely a good time. You want to shoot some people? I mean, birds? (laughs) Um, Birds aren't real. No to the first one. True. Birds are not real. I didn't mean to say that. (laughs) No, I don't, like... I want to duck. I mean, I I, I hunted for most of my life, you know, up until my mid-20s. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've hunted since I was 10 years old. I killed my first deer when I was 10 years old. Shit's fuck. I've never killed a deer. No. I've killed too many deer. (laughs) I've killed too many deer. So many deer. I killed so many deer with a gun that I stopped gun hunting and I only bow hunted for it's not like the about, last seven years. It's not to me when I look at it, it's not about the kill. It's about uh, just putting food on the table. Yeah. In reality, that's kind of what it's about. At the end of it, for me, for me, too. I don't. Yeah. I do not me. like killing whatsoever. That's honestly kind of why I got into fishing, because I, I could I could hunt stalk. I don't like and, killing for no reason. And catch an animal, and then I can release it and catch it again. Where, like a deer, it was like, I'm going to blow your fucking heart out of your chest tonight. <laughs> right. Like, it's like, and you know, that's, like, I'm the same way. And that's why, I mean, that's really why I don't really hunt anymore is because yeah. it's uh, it's not really like. Yeah. If you're not going to eat it, like, one, what's the point? I ate, you yeah, we grew so up. Good. We grew oh, up, yeah. so good. We grew up pretty good. poor. So 90% of the, the meat that we ate yeah. was deer. Oh, it's cheap. And I got Very freaking cheap. tired of it. Yeah. You know, so I don't really like eating venison anymore. Um, so, 
why hunt? And like, if I'm, you know, if I don't want to eat it, why not? Like, I've never, yeah. I've never been a trophy hunter. I've I've never went out and and shot trophies. I've never yeah. been about deer management, as far as like, oh well, you know, you 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 Me have neither. to you got to wait until you yeah. know that deer that deer's not old enough to shoot. Like they whatever. Like, but that's the it thing. All that they, the same. They have to put <laughs> regulations in because. There's people like me and you that would use deer to put food on the table, and then there's people that will go out there and just shoot anything that freaking moves. Oh, I'm not talking about regulations. I'm talking about like the the guys who are who who won't shoot a buck because it's not old enough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that buck's that buck's not old. Enough. Oh, you're never gonna you're never gonna kill a big buck, and and if you keep shooting those those two year old bucks, like that shit just gets on my nerves. Yeah. Well, somebody else is gonna shoot the two year old buck. Right. So like, yeah, as me. soon as they walk past you, <laughs> exactly. Boom, somebody right. else is blowing that yeah. thing away. Because so I it, totally understand that. Right. You can't like, I don't know that that stuff just like you know everybody's so. Into like f- eating the or f- or killing like you know you got to have the the trophy bucks the hundred you know yeah. if it's not 135 inches I'm not shooting it like a lot of places around here really you don't care. have a big enough piece of land to keep that deer on your property right it's, if it's going to go to the neighbor's property it's dead. Tom I got to show you this like, video unless you're on the deer. unless you're on the shore yeah, yeah the shore is a little different the shore is like the coolest there. place ever I know Fran- Frank's. Frank was really big. Dude, into, Rob, into deer the, he killed some monster, we, uh, monster bucks on the shore. Rob, we take all our deer up to uh, Harmony Ridge. That's why I was up at the one last year. They're yeah. fantastic. Phenomenal. You're going to take them back this year, right? I didn't shoot a whitetail this year, so I was cut up the second day myself. So. You haven't shot a whitetail yet this year. No, not this year. God damn, you got to shoot see, a whitetail. Uh, see, Rob, I got, so, it, dude, Harmony Ridge, dude, freaking trail baloney, all your butterfly cuts, your back strap. Yeah. I'm zooming in. Every, th- everything that you can want with mm-hmm. venison is just... That's what makes deer hunting worth yeah. it to me. It's not about the hunt and the kill. It's about putting food on the table, in my oh, yeah. opinion. Exactly. And that's why, like Rob said, you know, that's why there's no deer over three years old at Lock Raven. Like, oh, so they, to me, they it doesn't... killed, like, To me, it doesn't... Deer. Like, I don't... It doesn't matter to me that there's not a three-year-old deer there because if I'm going out to shoot a deer... I'm shooting uh, a tender one. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm. I'm just. I'm shooting literally. You know, the first deer that walks out in front of me. Like, I. I don't care. The antlers never did anything for me. Like, it was cool when I Every shot a good buck, but you. you know, I, I didn't really care. I'd rather shoot yeah. a doe. Doe tastes better. Yeah. Those do taste pretty. Rob, good. do you inject cheese into your trail baloney though? <laughs> do you? Yeah, I just never. I, I don't this know. Shit's so I, good. I never was oh a. God, I never so was good. a trophy. I, you know, I never Dude, cared was, about being a trophy. Isn't that shit so good? You know, I think I got two sticks of it. And so first off, I think I have eighty pounds ready to go up at my dad's house to bring down right now, and I still have two or three sticks of trail salami in the freezer over oh, there from was last the, year. Was that the sweet stuff? Because they had. More I had. Yeah, I got the sweet shit, and like then I got the cheddar one. stuff that's peppery. I like the sweet stuff better. That's not so fancy I got stuff. both. You wanna it's you phenomenal. wanna hear you wanna the hear. hot dogs? Oh, they were. Killer. Oh my god, dude! The hot dogs. What the fuck? They were so <laughs> good. Like, so you you wanna hear the uh, crazy crazy story the about deer butchering? They, Sean was talking about butchering, and we used to butcher our, all of our own deer too. Um, so, me and my mom butchered a deer. It was already skin. It already skinned. We didn't skin it. Uh, we completely butchered a deer in under an hour. Wow. No, we didn't cut steaks. You didn't cut your fingers off no. or anything? I there, mean, I do all we didn't cut steaks. myself, too. But I, I mean, dude, you steaks. can skin them, but when you take them up, like, actually processing the meat and the back straps and all that stuff, while. that's what the takes The only thing that we cut, was, I mean, we cut to out... To do it efficiently. We cut out We cut out the back, you know, cut out the back straps, cut out the tenderloins. Uh, we, did, we didn't cut out a lot. Of, we didn't really cut out any steaks. We just cut it into roasts. Yeah, so yeah. that saved a lot, a ton of so time. So let there. me ask you, do you um, think that growing up and doing stuff like that made you more savvy to catch and release than kill? I don't I don't think so because I, I've been fishing just as long. So, I mean, I, I, I've been catch and release fishing since I was a, a young, you know, 12. You know, it was, there, there was a time, like, when I was first got into fly fishing, like where, or when I first got into fishing, that like I wanted to keep that big fish, yeah. a- and then the big ones generally don't taste as good. Anyways. Right, I wanted to keep that big fish because I like I wanted to show it off to my parents, right? right? Yeah. And, but then it, you know, it got to you know a point where you know me and I, I fly fish a lot with my dad, and 
we fished, you know, a lot of catch and release areas. You know, a lot of the creeks that we fished were catch and, catch and release only. Right. Um, you know, catch and release fly fishing only areas. Uh, between like yellow breaches, yellow breaches, Latour, uh, we did a lot of fishing in Pennsylvania, Pine Creek, uh, Slate Run. Uh, I mean, we fished. Yeah, um, you want to get me one of them? A lot of the creeks up around State College. Uh, you know, we fish a lot of like world class trout waters. So, the blue moon like can? from a young age, I got introduced to catch and release fishing. Uh, because my, you know, my dad was. We did a lot of fishing in Western Maryland uh, on the catch and release streams out there, like Savage River. Uh, Thank you. Fish that, uh-huh. Is that racing? North Branch of Potomac. Some. So I will say one of the one of the most important things I found about hunting is like I, I kind of agree with what you guys are saying. Like to me, it's not about the kill. Like it's uh, not, dude. I actually you I have so much love and respect for the animals. I take that shit so seriously. Not, yeah, I really I swear I to God I do. Like except, it, when it, except when a duck lands on the water. <laughs> okay, so first of all, well, so, hold on, but we clarified that we, we got did past not. that. We we're past that. That's we agreed to disagree on that we, kind of. We agreed Look, to disagree, but that's not happening anymore. The mo- the biggest the that's not happening. Well, anymore. Well, yeah, but it's, yes, but. The most that's why I said about the respect. That's the, not the most happening anymore. Famous duck hunter in the world says I Fuck won't that take. guy. I don't care. It's Phil Robertson. Did you not no. He created modern duck hunting. No, this is First he's of all, he's from Louisiana. Louisiana. This is not he's Maryland. Old, he's an old redneck. Sure. And I'm pretty follow. sure he's probably spotlighted his share of deer too. <laughs> yes. That's probably true. I'm just saying. That's probably true. There is a time. Yes, it does. There I, is I a fish time many and times. there is a place, and then there is a respect for the animal. Sure, and no, I, I agree. I in agree my with you 100%. opinion, no matter what, I'm sorry, if, unless you're going to starve to death, the respect for the animal is number one. Right I there. agree, 100. Yeah. percent Number read, read one. Sean, Sean's comment. I pray over work. every deer I kill. I Dude. really, it's really a blessing to harvest an animal in their. That shit right there. They, they are very. I have Dude, prayed more am, in a duck it blind. It is so true. I have prayed so I, more in a duck blind this year than I have in church. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not a religious person at all. But hunting and harvesting an animal is a very spiritual experience. It is so You're spiritual. I, I won't say it's a spiritual. You know, in, not in a religious sense, but just being connected. Life. Just yeah. being being yeah, connected exactly. with connected 100%. with nature and 100%. having that respect for that animal. Yeah. You know, is um, I, I think is it, it, I think it was a very important. Thing I that I, I swear to God, up. I swear to you, and and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because of Sean's comment. Everything I've killed this year, I have done that exact same thing. I swear to God, and and me, me and the Lord had a falling out, but I swear to you that is a God's honest truth. You thank like thank you for bringing this to me. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. and Even I'm I'm not, the most unreligious know, person that, in the world. You know, you thank that you know you thank that animal. Correct. You know, Thank you. If you're not a religious, if you're your not a religious life, person yeah. like me, you know, no, no. it's just a respect Dude, for that animal. Correct. That's we're a, all we're all living. You know, we're all living things. That's just shit that made I'm, me we're emotional. Starting to, we're starting to sound a little hippie mm-hmm. now, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't. <laughs> no, I don't up. think so. I that's think the true. shit that made me emotional when I got into duck hunting and goose hunting. Though, is I remember uh, just reading about uh, geese mate for life, and. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it's true. There's times I, I, I blew geese out of the sky, and they didn't die when they hit the ground. Oh, that's the worst. You broke Rob their up. wing. You break their wing, they fall down, and then they start running across the field. Then you got to go head rake them on the field. And it's like you shot something, and you broke its arm, and it fell 30 feet out of the ground, and it smashed into the ground, and then it took off across the field. It was terrified yeah. for its life, and then you fucking killed well, it. That's why you do that And then I just quick. like, I don't. That w- that's what made me want to go to the fishing platform. I mean, honestly, I could see so, that. I could I could see I really, why that would I, turn That was off. why I went to fishing, because I felt so bad about doing that, no matter what, that it was like, I, have a I, still, enjoy, I still enjoy the stalk, I still enjoy the hunt, but I like being able to catch something and release it and yeah. know that the ability to catch it is there again, yeah. where if you blow it away with a 12-gauge, it's just dead. Yeah, so... Yeah. So Maybe first, you're not of, wrong. so first of and, all, and and there's siblings that are involved with geese that are affected by who you just murdered, and I just I couldn't sleep at night over so, that. So I didn't like it. 
first thing I want to do is respond to Rob real quick. Uh, I'll let you know when one's in my backyard and you can come like shoot it with pellet gun or something. <laughs> the black squirrels. I get them. I do get them. I get. I, I do get one in my yard every now and then. Um, the black squirrels are pretty cool. However, I gotta say, I, I it was kind of the, the gray squirrels. Everything. Kind of along the <laughs> along the same lines as you. One of the reasons that I got that I got out of hunting was. I shot I shot a buck. Uh, it was the, it would have it would have been the biggest buck that I've ever killed. It was it was I mean just gigantic. Um shot it with a bow. Tracked it, couldn't find it. Like it lost a blood trail in a corner. Dude, I'm, yeah, that's... I know I like I know I made a uh, I know I made a good long shot on it. Like but it yeah. like for some reason like we we just couldn't find it in you know in the in this cornfield. It made me so sick that I couldn't find that deer. That I almost that that was pretty much when I stopped when I stopped hunting deer. It just makes you upset that you take a life and you don't be able, you're not able to harvest yeah. the life that you took. I, I am telling you right now, and, and I feel that in my core. If you hunt that is long oh enough, my. it is going to happen. I don't care how perfect of a shot you are, your marksman, yeah. whatever, it is going to happen that right. a deer just. Runs. They're yeah. gonna. They're. I mean, especially yeah. if you're bow hunting, they're gonna. They're gonna oh, jump. The, they're gonna jump yeah. the string. They're gonna. You know. They're. They're. So. They're even, gonna jump the string. The hunting. wind. Uh, there could be a. a you know, a random yeah. twig you yeah. don't see. So last year, a buddy of mine, not me personally, Rob just said opening really day good. of rifle season. Probably not listening, my buddy Brett. He's not as cool as you might remember him. Anyways, he was he hunts over corn figure all the time. He shot opening day of rifle season. He shot a second deer. 20, 30 yards with a, uh, what was that? Three thirty eight. Taking foul shots. No, three thirty eight Lapua. Excuse me. It was <laughs> a, that's a little overkill for a second was, deer. He shot it with a three hundred wind mag at about twenty or thirty yards. Still overkill. Never found it. How? Because because the, it blew it in half. Because the deer that are on his feeder walk from his feeder twenty yards away, and they have about this much fat on them. So probably when he hit it, it just sealed itself back up and just ran. Uh, but <laughs> should have blew that deer in half. Three hundred. Like, why are you? Why are you hunting sick of deer with a three hundred wind mag? Because you don't want. In case there's another one behind it. Tony, let him out. But so honestly, when bugs, I'm bugs. down the eastern shore, if I can, if I can get a head or a neck shot, I'm going to take it. Because oh, you don't want them to run. I do go not the want them to run. So if they run, no. you will not find them. Uh, uh, so Rob, Rob makes a good point. A- anybody that's listening that hunts. Please, please don't just pick up your gun or your bow and go out. Sight it in. Never. You, yeah. you have to practice. Can you close yeah. that door? And an animal's life. You have to. You have to practice. It, you, it is. It is disrespectful yep. to go out and not be able to place a good shot and know exactly what you need to do. And that doesn't mean just going out and you know shooting ten rounds out of your bow. And go, oh, I'm good. No, you need to go out and pre- if you're going you to bow hunt, confidence a clean kill, a un, I'm sorry, a unclean kill is disrespectful it, it, to the life that you've just right. trying to take. And, um, you want to make that as fast. You're, it, the deer or the animal that you're taking is to help you in your life and to help you continue to go. Yeah. You do not want that animal to suffer any more than it has to, and you need to make sure that that kill is as clean right. as it can. Right, and it be. doesn't matter what you're. It doesn't matter what you're hunting. It doesn't matter what kind Period. of what kind of weapon you're using to hunt. You have to go out and practice. You can't just pick up a gun and go out and and shoot. Yeah. I I mean, I when I growing up, like we shot all the time. Yeah. Whether it, you know, we shot for fun all the time. Well, you know, back then they always we're talking, you know, twenty five years ago. You know, so you could you could pick up a that box a of twelve box of twelve gauge shells for like four bucks. Yeah, holy <laughs> crap! When Those the were fuck? the days, right? Oh yeah, you could buy it. You could buy it. It was a uh, tw- it was twenty dollars for a case of a case of uh, twelve gauge. For, it's not that uh, Biden economy. However, Biden I do remember sense. that shit was very expensive back in. For like clay, lo- we used well, to shoot. I think I think Obama was in back then too, but <laughs> we used no to shoot. What. So we used to shoot. We used to shoot a lot of clay pigeons. Uh, yeah, back back in the day, and yeah. like you get, it was twenty bucks for for, for a, a case of shells. We should go up to Hopkins sometime. Me, you, and Tony. I haven't shot there. trap in a long time. We I love. I love. We should go to Hopkins. Carney. Where's Hopkins? Carney's even closer. Hopkins. Carney's even. Hopkins? Just go to Carney. We should go to Hopkins Game Farm. 
No, you know, I'm telling you, Hopkins Game Farm is one of those like trap ski places that has so, like sixty different places, and you run a freaking golf cart in it. Oh, yeah, they're uh, badass. I always shot it. It's like an hour yeah. and a half away on the eastern shore. I always oh fuck that. I'll go to see her. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Harvey, I know what you're talking dude, about. This place is bad. I'm, yes. Yeah. So, like if I'm going to shoot trap, like I don't, I, I never like, I never like skeet. I, I shot, I, like I, I shot trap. I shot trap difference. a lot. Which one's which? So, so skeet is uh, skeet that is where they're they're coming out over your head. You have like the five lanes that you switch between. This so is five lanes. That's, that's trap. That's trap. This okay. is all trap. Skeet. They're coming over your. They they can come over your head. I got you. Um, Sporting clays, they they come from like yeah. freaking ever. They can roll That's across what the this ground. Is, this is all sporting clays. Sporting they clays. roll them across the, the ground. They go across the air. They go up high. They do a bunch of different stuff up at this uh, at this place. So we should was, go. We should go shoot up there. See, there was a place. A uh, buddy of mine got married two years ago, so it was bachelor weekend. Whatever we went to, PG County. I want to say mm-hmm. they have a range out there. It, same thing with what Paul was saying. Like it's pretty much set up like a golf course. Like yes. Skeet. Like you even have golf carts outside yeah. the thing. You just they, get on the golf you cart. Get, you get a card. Like you put uh, 200 shots on it or whatever. Yes. And you go to the station. You put your card in. You shoot whatever. You go to the next station. It's badass. That is cool as shit. I never, see, I never got into it. I always, yeah. I, but I, I never got into that. I've done but it. But it would be fun to do but once I've got, twice. I've, I've done it. I've done hey, it in the past. I, when I, when I shot at Carney, I watched the old man shoot with a twenty a $20,000 trap gun. Okay, we're not going to do that, but we're going to do it. I was like, what the wanna, fuck? You want to do something gonna funny? We're going to do a Hopkins range. You and you and me. And I was we're going to invite Paul whether he wants to cover or not. So I was shooting at Cedar one night. Uh, we, we shot a Cedar gun club a lot uh, up in uh, up in Hick- uh, Hickory. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Right right by your house. It's right down the road from yeah. my place. We used so to go there in high school all the time. We used to, we used to shoot there all the time. So uh, there was, uh, my mom used to work for work at a liquor store, and the, the bud driver, the guy that drove the bud truck that delivered <laughs> the bud, used to shoot there, used to shoot there all the time. And like, a bunch of like Tony, you know, there's, there are guys there with, you know, with ten to $15,000 trap guns. That's a cheap one. This, Shit. This dude, this, silver sights and shit like that. Dude, when this they can roll them crazy. across the ground, they call them rabbits. They go across the ground like a freaking rabbit. This this dude would come, would walk, would come in with, <laughs> with an old model twelve, <laughs> and just clean their shit. <laughs> I, the I watched, I watched him, I watched him shoot four twenty fives one night. Wow. Like in a he shot four rounds, four twenty fives. Shoot, just just shoot tra- trap or ski trap. And what what Wait, distance well, was he shooting? Is that from? one no shot? No handicap. Oh my god. No one shot. One shot. Shoot. Yeah, trap is. Dude, trap's awesome. One trap's shot. A lot of fun. Four twenty fives. That's good. Like never, never. He shot four rounds, never missed a bird, and then just went home. Mm. It was insane. He probably does that every single week. We had a so we had a. He, he probably had, doesn't even get in the money either. We he had a long up. shot. We had a long shot competition up there one time, and I swear to God, like they were shooting the birds straight out. He was he was busting them when they were like this high off the ground, like as far out as they were go. They were about to hit the ground. He was busting them. So, That's uh, ridiculous. It's probably just muscle memory fella, at that point. I mean, they're Tom, coming I was telling, telling you guys about who? You but out there, like fella? it's so it's 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 way more than muscle memory because they're so far out and they're they're just dropping. Yeah. So like t- the timing is Depends ridiculous. Depends where the wind's going too because they could just. Yeah, it's it was yeah. it was crazy. We had a lot of fun doing that. You guys uh, remember that that fellow, Mr. Tom, I was talking to you guys about earlier before we started yeah. this podcast? Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So not only is he a bass fishing phenomenon Three years, Rob. that I want to have on the show, trap and skeet shooting, like, pro. Hmm. I've, I have personally watched him bust. Uh, what is it? How, how do they do it? How do they say it? So he, he will throw a... He, he shoots it over Is and under. Dead? He shoots it over and under or mm-hmm. side by side. And I've watched him bust the clays one by one. I've also watched him throw, uh, shoot three out of a side by side. That's insane. <laughs> That's crazy. My my dad my dad my dad's a, is a, a pretty pretty amazing tra- yeah. trap shooter. He he did a um, lot of lot of trap shooting when he was younger. Yeah, uh, so uh, I will definitely. Uh, been, Mr. Man, Mr. Tom so will definitely since. be coming on the show in the future. It's been it's been so long since I'd I'd love to go shoot trap. My one of my, one of the guys in my club, you know, he we talk about it all the time, like just getting together, going up to Cedar and shoot and shooting trap. And I just haven't done it. 
Me and I'll, Kevin yeah, go. I'll, I'll um, shoot some trap with you. I'll me go. and Kevin go to Carney all the time. You should come with us. Yeah, we should go. Carney's all fun. Of, dude, all Carney's of us should go. That'd be a great time. It would be fun. I take my stupid for Tom, stupid looking trap. It's so you expensive now. <laughs> it is, but I mean, it's it's not terrible. I mean, like the the biggest expense is the shells. It, Wait, yeah. What's a box of shells now? For uh, 15 for bucks, Jesus, here. yeah, yeah, it's about fifteen bucks. Rob says, "Okay, back to fishing. How much longer until the MLF folds?" Three years. Two weeks. I give it three years. So it's three years. Three years? It's probably going to be. It's so it wait, why is the MLF going to fold in three it's years boring as shit. I give it a year. I, I give it a year after they drop to 50 anglers. So they're they're dropping to 65 after this year. Why? And it's a every fish counts. Yes. Yeah, they're dropping that's to, why, dude. They're Sorry. dropping to 65. That shit. Why is it every fish counts? Nobody that? likes that shit. It's boring. No. Is it a... Uh, is it every fish like counts it. if it's a pound over? If it's un- under a pound, it, they usually set they set a weight limit. <gasps> it's a pound over, right? So it depends That's on the body. Depends on the body of water that they fish. They they do like they investigate like the tournaments that are there, and they kind of get like an average weight, you know, of what a like a, a solid keeper is, and it might be, uh, you know, two pounds at one place, but if they go to like Lake Fork, it might be three pounds. Okay. You know, so it's my biggest thing with MLF is if they were, they should have, you know, like, there's so much back and forth changing on the rules and stuff like that that it's just, it's hard to follow. They. Why not pick something that is indecisive between uh, the Bassmaster Classic and FLW? Well, they should have just lifted it. Like, and, and roll with it. Right. They should have just kept it the same. Like, that's if they were trying to roll yeah. with every fish counts, just roll with every fish counts. Don't just change roll it. roll with it. Right. And that's what, uh, you know, the, the majority of their fan base liked that every fish counts. You know, as I thought. The problem was the anglers didn't really like five. As I thought about they, it more right and talked count. about it more, I I liked it at first. And then I was like, eh. I don't, like every fish counts. But I don't like it. Yeah. So it ends up being, you know, so, and there's a lot of like, um, there's a lot of controversy ar- around the every fish counts and like the, uh, the, the dink fest and oh, it's a dink. That's what I'm trying to say. Like you can <laughs> catch, you, you can catch the, 200 dinks. If you look at the weight. What does that matter? If you, but if you look at the weights and I saw somebody break it down, like they took the top five, the top five biggest fish from. Like an like the every fish counts tournaments, right. and most of the tournaments, the guys who won with the every fish counts also won the five fish. Huh. It, like if it was a if it had been a five fish tournament, they would have been right. yeah. they would have been first or second, you know, because they're you so play, the hammers that we're gonna win, we're gonna win regardless. Like pretty much, you look at uh, you look at Jacob Wheeler. Doesn't matter if it's a five fish limit or every every fish counts. The reason that he wins tournaments is not because of the format; it's because of the amount of time he puts in. Yeah, pretty much. The dude fishes all the time. Justin Lucas is another good, another good example. Justin Lucas, phenomenal fisherman. The amount of time that he puts in, if he doesn't do well in a tournament, he'll stay there for a week after, and just to figure out what he missed. Just to figure out why he didn't. Right. And that's why these guys are always uh, gonna. They're they're gonna. It doesn't matter if they go to MLF. That's it doesn't set, matter if they they came to the Elite Series. Right. It doesn't matter where they fish. They're yeah. going to be at the top because the amount of time they're like they're talented anglers and they put in the time. Yep. That's what it all boils down. Yes, to. Martin. That's the other thing. There's it's their their format is so confusing. You know, especially with how it. Uh, it they're changing that this year, but like the way it used to be, you know, you had Group A and then Group A fished one day, and then the next day Group B fished, but Group A didn't fish, and then Group A fished again the next day, and then Group B fished. It is confusing as shit. I, I I can't. And then it, and then the field got with it. and then the field get cut. Field get cut to. Yeah, you can't follow that. Forty anglers or whatever it is, and then the top ten out of that forty anglers then make the championship round. And it's you know the tournament ends up being like eighteen freaking days long. Yeah. You know so. Who has time to follow? All Wheeler that? is the New England Patriots of MLF. Like he's really good, but everybody hates him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess is what Rob's trying to say there. It, it's it, it's not, it, it, you know, a lot of it too is like the some of the stuff that's going on with the ownership is just. I mean, if you look, there's a lot of guys that dropped out of the BPT this year. 
Yep. Um, you know, Russ, uh, Russ Lane's fishing. He dropped out of the BPT. He's fishing the Opens. Randall Tharp drop and these are big name guys yeah. that have had successful tournament careers i mean they've been professional fishermen for years you know and they're dropping out to fish the opens because uh you know because of the format changes you know and everything you know they change they say oh we're angler driven and then they come out and go uh just kidding <laughs> we're going back to this format we don't oh, care what you think he said it no live scope who said it rob now see would love to see no ff See the problem. The problem that I have with it's that it's never going to go away. From is every here. everybody everybody saying, "Oh well, forward facing dominates every tournament." And they, we have seen higher weights in every single tournament. From a production standpoint, why would you ever ever, get rid of it? ever since FFW you can't, you forward can't get facing rid of it. sonars you come can't. out? So like, why the industry? Why would they get, give the it up? The industry can't get rid of it because of the amount of sponsorships and money that runs deep. Well, here's the, just here, bar none. Here, here's the thing though. You, do you think? Just because you get rid of forward facing sonar, people are going to stop fishing offshore. No, of course not. Because forward facing no, sonar no, taught I gotta them. I got to say, like they're at a complete disadvantage. But they were fishing offshore prior to that, and they were. It, it's not forward facing sonar. It's the production of uh, It's the introduction of live fishing. If you go back 10, 10 years ago, before Bass Bassmaster Live started. The people were still doing the same thing, but they condensed it into an hour show. So you didn't see the five hours that, of the day that they weren't catching fish. Right. So you get into this. Well, that's why everybody thinks it's boring. It's not because of forward-facing sonar. Every tournament on the St. Lawrence River for the last 15 years has been one in Lake Ontario fishing offshore, doing the same thing with 2D sonar that they're doing with forward-facing sonar now. The only difference now is instead of them trolling around waiting to see one underneath, they can see the fish, you know, 100 feet out in front of them. So it, it's more, it makes it more entertaining from a, you know, from a production standpoint when people are catching more fish. Yeah. Like, you, do you want to watch eight hours of live fishing when, Hell you know, no. when they're only catching six, seven fish a day? Or do you want to watch eight hours of live fishing when they're, you know, they're catching 20 fish a day? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, they've been doing that for a while. It just got popular. What's Martin saying? They put four faces turn on a jack. Yeah, they are. So they're running it like side scan. And, oh. and you know, it's just it's insane. I but do Rob, think I, so Rob, I've seen that. Dude. The, dude, the, I, bro, I, I the really, bros are running shit that is like incomprehensible to like anything that we could ever run. I agree, but like, here's it's, my thing. It's out of the basis of what is affordable. Dude, I still think so, Matt Heron brought up a good point where it's like, look, who's going to be the first guy that's got yes, 15, that. that's got, yeah, I totally agree. That's that. got 37 graphs on his dash and can't see over the bow of the boat and run somebody over because he can't see what the hell's going on. My, my biggest, my biggest thing is not necessarily a safety concern, but it's, you know, the guys, you know, that guy that, that came out of college. Fish the opens. Mm -hmm. He qualified. Okay, well now he's got to put sixty thousand dollars in electronics on his boat. He doesn't have any sponsors. It's all about money at that. Point. And he's gonna he's gonna end up washing yeah, but, out but, in two years because sure. he can't he can't afford to keep up with yeah. you know, keep and up with. I the, think with Tom really just said something important. It's about money at that point, and it's about that mo it's about money at that point. As soon as you go above the club level, as oh, yeah. soon as you for sure, as yeah. soon as period. you step into the BFLs, there are some guys that it's about like, money in the club period. Sure. But I'm, yeah, honestly, yes. Yes, but the other yes. thing, the other as thing, soon as you, as soon like the BFL is like the entry level big tournament that anybody can get in, and you know you have really really good anglers and really really bad anglers in the BFL, right? But even at that level, it's it's all about fucking money, dude. Hundred percent. But like your money, money doesn't catch you fish. It doesn't, but it helps. I know people who have had certainly. Helps. I know people who have had live scope on their boat for five. You know, since it came out five. You know, oh, for I mean, if you can't four, fish, four to five, fish. four to five years, like it doesn't catch yeah. fish for you. You still have to know how to locate fish. You still have to know what predominant patterns are. You can't. You're not just dropping your trolling motor in the lake and catching fish. That that doesn't happen. I know people I who know. fish the upper bay who've had live scope on their boat for four to five years, and they still can't cash a check in a fucking tournament. 
So I know on He's the, talking about me. The whole saltwater offshore game. <laughs> Gay. It's money. <laughs> sonar is everything in that. Right. Because nowadays, all the big boats, like the guys that are fishing, like the Webron Open, all them like big name tournaments, they all have sonar. Rob knows about that. Rob fishes away. They all have here. sonar on their boats. Like they can see a fish that's three miles away. Well, they also they can go to it. They can well, go look in at, front of it. And look at the, go, look, at the it look at the other look at the other stuff that they have. They have you yeah. know they're they're running radar on their boats. They can yeah. see when fronts are moving, so they yeah. you know they can yeah. run the edges of fronts. Electronics is everything. In you know, so uh, you know, like I like I totally I, I do agree with limiting it. I I think it should be limited to one you get right. one forward facing sonar. Right. On the front. So what do you? If what you do want you, to run them on the back, like I don't, I don't really care if you run them so on the back by sides game because you know who cares. What do you think about yeah. one graph at the helm and one at the front? Uh, no, I think you can run. You can run if you want to run two, three graphs. Well, you know, I see the benefit of that. Like even without live scope, uh, you know, two graphs is important. I mean, I, I run. run I have oh, two yeah, at the front. You know, I, mean, I can run when I before I had live scope. I was running a graph for maps and I was running a graph for three sixty. Like, are we going to ban three sixty? Like that's like you want to you want to have no live scope. Do we want to have no? Well, let's take away let's take away three sixty. Let's take away okay, side let's, scan. Let's, let's, take let's away. not pretend that three sixty had the same impact on on fishing that live scope did. I mean, it's, it's it's a great tool, but it's not even close. The only reason that it's not is because not everybody had it. Brandon Palinick put on a clinic on Champlain one year yeah. using three sixty. Sure, and dominated that tournament. I agree with you. And how many clinics have been put on with forward facing sonar? 20 to 1. So was, a bunch has just come out. That's what because, I'm saying. Because people can't run it. What, 360 yeah. or, or live? There's very limited people. When you're, that... limited, when you're limited to your electronic sponsors and you can't run, you can't run it. And that's a... a, that's a good, that's an actually a valid point. Okay, so you're you're off, right. It's a valid first point. First off, you it want to talk about point. electronic sponsors. I'm not even talking about the electronic, the electronic sponsors. There's guys that go out there with what they have, what they buy, and they go find fish. Well, uh, Jeff Gustafson. <laughs> Literally a everybody on the you know elite. You what I'm trying to say, yeah, though? Like, that's the, that's what I know. You go out with live scope, and you can find fish. I don't care if you, you have the most up-to-date no live scope unit or if you have the most out-of-date live scope unit. I'm telling you, it I'm makes it more tell you right now, like, yeah. like yeah. Josh, yeah. Josh yeah. Jones, it, Josh Jones right. was finding 12, 13, 14, 15 pounders before. No, he wasn't. He made his career off live scope. Correct. He made like, that's what I'm trying to say though. Yeah. He made his career off live scope. He he went Why out with didn't live he do scope it off 360? and he learned how to develop off live scope. How to how to look at this is what size fish this is. This is how I, I this is how I um So you can This is how I get, pick apart that so, I have fish. So let's on take this away three sixty that is submerged in ten feet of water. Well, let's take away three sixty and we'll look at how side scan dominated the the early the mid two thousands. It absolutely three sixty and live scope is just totally different. Things. So, uh, no, take we're just talking about technology. We'll take away three sixty. Live scope now is very similar to side scan in the early two thousands. It dominated. The reason K V D dominated the mid two thousands was largely because of side scan and graphing. It took away, like, when you get to, like, Kentucky Lake and, uh, you know, those ledge tournaments, it takes away that local advantage. Because the local guys know about those ledges. They know where to find them. You know, yeah. they know where to find them. Mapping and side scan changed the game yeah. more than LiveScope did. And you can yeah, see it. And yeah, you can see yeah. it. If you go to, if you go right. to Kentucky yeah. Lake and you, and you go out and you fish the ledges, those fish know... KVD won a tournament on Chickamauga uh, a couple years ago, a, a BPT tournament, mm -hmm. and he he explained in that tournament that if you idled over those fish, you would not catch them. Yeah, you're gonna scare them, I know. That because there. they've they've been they've been scanned so many times that yeah. they know if a if that if that boat goes anywhere near them, if that side scan hits that school, those fish will not eat. Live scope is going to come. It's going to come around the same way. The fish, we don't give fish that, enough. You think credit. that live scope eventually will come around to be a negative? I don't think it'll come around to be a negative. I think the fish are going to be are going to get conditioned. Mm -hmm. to it's it. already started. It's already started. Like well, I can tell you right now, say, like they can you hear those pings coming down through the, the spotted bass water. lakes in the Midwest and shit. It's already happening. Like bull shoals and shit. Like 
those big like suspended fish where you talking about fish suspended over 100, 100 feet of water those spotted bass respond to the live scope rob but like, Brent they, they Brent Aylor won leave. an FLW tournament using 2D sonar doing the same thing. He was fishing over 100 feet of water fishing for spotted bass that were suspended in 45 feet. And he was using 2D. We've been doing this for years. It's the same style of fishing. Sure. It's just been it, it, the it's learning refined. curve. The it's learning curve has excellently, been excellent. It's excellently refined. It's okay. Yeah. It's like, okay, we've been making light in our houses for hundreds of years. It's like the difference between using a candle and flipping a switch. Right. Why the end have result's we seen, the same. Hold up, but why have we seen bigger bags of bass? This is what I'm telling ever you. Ever caught since LiveScope came but out. But you have it. Uh, yes, they, we have. No. No, you haven't. False. You haven't. They <laughs> yes, just, we have. They just, uh, Ken Duke just put out a, put it, went through. I read it. So, so there's one the guy average, out there. The average, he went through all of the Bassmaster Elite Series for the last 20 years. Wasn't Paul Elias still and not, like, number aver- one? The average size fish has not really changed. In fact, the, the, the biggest average fish over an Elite Series season was in like 2005. Which was probably when they fished Falcon and you know, the, the, like eight people broke 100 pounds for four days. But, you know, it's, it's not, it hasn't, it hasn't actually changed that much. The, the difference is the production of the fishing. We see, it's the stuff that we see on TV because there's so much more the of an way, interface. Okay, so know? not the, the media the media portion. The media the portion media is, is the way that we think we see things differently. Right, because it, like I said, you you know, I don't well, want to see just, somebody so staring so at their grandpa. Hold up, I'm trying to I'm trying to talk about like I'm trying to talk and listen to like guys like Josh Jones and stuff like that. You have guys that don't go out there and catch 10, 12, 13, 14, 15 pounders. We also at the rate that they do before live scope was ever it, you can go back to California in the in the early it happened, early two thousand. Not at the same. Notice that all that most of, of that bop, 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 a bop. lot of his big fish are coming off. A, he's hitting one lake that he's is in its also prime. Had several lakes out like Tennessee and all that. Stuff. He he's done Oklahoma lakes that he knows because he's from Oklahoma, right? So <laughs> look at if you go back to go back to the Butch Brown days. Where Butch Brown is, ca- you know, is catching fifty pound limits out of a freaking OG. giant boat. Butch Brown is OG. Right. Now, granted, he is the OG of swim bait fishing. fishing a let's, lot of smaller. You know, he was fishing a lot of smaller, a lot of smaller lakes. You know, they were trout lakes. But he was hit. It, the reason that happened is he was hitting those lakes in his prime. I, I look at it to, like everybody's the 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 live scope naysayers are, are like, oh, well, it dominates every tournament. Look at even Okeechobee. You know, now you can't even win at Okeechobee. Okay, so one guy out of the top ten was live scoping. The the other nine guys in the top ten don't matter. They all had a chance to win that tournament. He just happened to catch them better that day. So out of ten guys, you're going to say the live scope dominated that tournament because one guy in the top ten was using live scope. It doesn't make any sense. You're the people that are complaining about it are looking for reasons to complain about it. I think live scope is a predominant advantage. No, Butch Brown's not. People. Butch Brown's not the snagger. That was Mike. That was Mike Long. Yeah, yeah, Mike, Mike, yeah. that is Mike Long. Butch Butch Brown is OG. Mike, He's the yeah. He is OG. But I will tell you, yeah, Mar- far, much were, respect for Mike Long. Uh, what what's the other? I wanted, wait. Hold up. Did I say Mike Long? Mike Long's the snagger. Mike Long. Fuck Mike Long. <laughs> So fuck when, Mike Long, the other guy, Butch Brown, Butch Brown School, Mike Long, fuck Mike Long, Mike what, Long. with a capital F. To what Jeff just said, I, I've I've seen the same thing. So I got we a piss with a capital P. So when we were in Texas uh, in 2022, <laughs> if you if you hit a if you hit a brush pile with uh, forward facing sonar and you were le- if you were less than 40 feet away from it. You could watch the fish swim out of it. Oh, sure. They were oh, just 100%. gone. As soon as you hit it with it, gone. You watch them swim out of the brush pile. Yep. It was insane. Have you heard, like, the ping? Like, it's what does loud, it sound dude. like? It's, it's loud as shit. I haven't really heard it. Like, it's loud I, as shit outside of the boat. Because, like, I pulled mine up, like, on my front one. You can hear, like, when it's on if you really listen to it. But it's not, like, obnoxious. 
Yeah, it, it's probably about the same. Like, yeah. about the same as, like, a size gain transducer. I know guys on Spotted Bass Lakes in Tennessee that are, you know, if you, it, if they're, if there's a school of spots 100 feet out and you, if they're 90 feet out and you hit them with, with forward face and center, they'll disappear. Yep. You know, yep. The fish are going to become accustomed to, just like the A-Rig. The A-Rig was hot. It, yep. you know, it was super hot. It never should have been banned. I do agree with, like, I agree that it never should have been banned. But, you know, it was hot, and it was the next day. It was going to catch every fish in the lake. And, hey, guess what? The fish got accustomed to it. Yep. And, and now it's just like any other bait. It's situational. Yep, yep. pretty much. I throw, I throw an A-Rig a lot. I can tell you it's not, you know, it, it, it's not, you know, the, end, the be-all, end-all. Uh, and you're going to, I feel like you're going to see the same thing with forward-facing sonar. I, I Honestly, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a big deal. Until somebody wins a tournament doing something else. Probably. And when somebody wins a tournament doing something, when they when somebody figures something new out and they figure out a different way to catch them, that's, that'll be the next big thing, and that's that's where it'll go. Fishing is all about trends. It's going to be a Pretty long much. time before they figure out a more efficient form of catching fish than well, this. Depending on if how, how long it takes the fish to get accustomed to it. You, you were outside. So some spotted bass lakes in Dude, Tennessee. Dude, but how could you get even more realistic than what we have? It doesn't now? matter. It doesn't have to do with being realistic. So the spotted bass Trigger lakes in Tennessee, uh, if, you, if, you are, if you see a school of spots 90 feet out, 90 feet, that's a long cast, 90 feet out, you hit them with forward-facing sonar, they'll disappear. Because they've been they've been hit with forward facing sonar so much they, they know what they, it feels they like. They know to that it's you know that it's that it's dangerous. Just like we were talking about with KVD scanning, they're going to become accustomed to it. It, it. It's just like any any new bait that comes out. Look at chatterbait when chatterbait first came out. Chatterbait like you could throw you could literally just throw a chatterbait all year and probably cash a check in more tournaments than than you didn't. Right, but. As so they got, they got fi- as they got fished more, chatterbait. You know the, the chatterbait is still a great bait, still fantastic. Bait. I throw a chatter. I always have a chatterbait tied on. I love chatterbait. Just make sure you spell it right when you type it in, because if not, you're <laughs> going to end up on a different site. I don't want well, <laughs> chat your bait. Oh, right. <laughs> That's where you masturbate online. So yeah, correct. And I think the, <laughs> correct. So so Rob, Rob mentioned site fishing tournaments and and. I kind of want to talk about that's the other thing when we're talking about like production is the the easiest way to make forward facing sonar not an issue is the schedule when and where you schedule your tournaments. Correct. Yeah. Stop having summertime tournaments. If you stop having all you know, tournaments that you know are going to be dominated offshore, forward facing sonar is not going to be as big of a deal. Have all your tournaments in April, May, October, and November. Now. You know the guys that are really good with it can that can that use it. Brian Schmidt is one who who uses it shallow fishing grass. You know it's it's helping him, sure, but it's not. You know it's not dominating it because he has forward facing sonar. You know he just knows. Oh, okay, I can see some. I, I can see some fish here. Right. It's. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I, you know, and again, it's going to dominate offshore tournaments. So like the Champlain, late Saint Lawrence, live, Champlain in the summertime. Up. So to elaborate on the comment from uh, Jeff, the people that complain about live scope are just complainers. Either you catch them, whether you don't need it, or fish for the suspended ones without it. Yeah, it's. Like you can fish. I mean, I, I've fished suspended fish for years using two D sonar. It's not like it's uh, we. You know, you do it in the winter time all the uh, all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's it, prior to live scope. You know, we we're you know that's where the Demiki rig came. In. You know, Jacob Wheeler won a tournament on Cherokee in the winter time. Wasn't guess what? Wasn't he using forward facing sonar? He's using two D. He was Demiki rigging. Straight into the boot. I can watch. I, I can. I can see my bait on two D if I'm fishing vertically. Yeah. I did it on the same arm. I caught uh, the day that we fished. Front out, side. The day that we fished on Ontario, uh, one of the days we had a little tournament when we were up there a couple years ago. Every one of my fish that I caught, I caught. I saw on two D sonar. 
and I dropped I I dropped him. Watch my bait go down to him. Watch them follow my bait on two D sonar. If you have two D sonar dialed in, like it's as long as you're fishing. The only difference is you're you're looking out. Right? Yeah. A lot of people compare it to a flat, the old, like an old flasher. You know, if you're using a flasher when you're it's got like, to know when how ice to read it. You know, if you know how to read a flasher, you can do the same thing with a flasher yeah. when you're ice fishing. You know exactly when that fit, you know you have a live, basically a live sonar image on yeah. on that flasher screen. You know that that fish is you know that fish is moving up and down. It's just facing down instead of forward. Right. I I just I don't see the, I don't see where again we talked about money. The the only way to keep bass fishing as a a sport, it, you know, as big of a sport as it is, and to do all of these all the tournaments and the things that we like, you have to embrace that technology. If you take it out, you're 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 going to lose people. You're going to lose yeah, sponsor yeah, dollars. You're, you're going to people out. Yep. You know, so it's you, the the advancement of the sport. Yeah. You have to, you, they have to keep advancing. You know, the, these electronic companies dump a lot of money into the sport. Right. And sure, you, you know, we can go out and we can fish Thursday nighters. We don't, you know, we don't need live scope or anything like that. I mean, I've never, I can tell you that in three years of Thursday nighters, I've never caught a fish on live scope. Yeah, me too. Maybe, maybe one. I saw, yeah. I did see one on a hump in the quarry one time. I fired a crankbait out there and caught it. But, you know, it's, you can't you have to if you want the sport to grow and to continue to be a thing you you have to embrace the technology whether whether you like it or not you know and that's chad uh, check check the messages on the on the page i feel like a this lot of entertainment the, value I, if you if you notice a lot of the you know a lot of the people that are the, a lot of the naysayers about it they're you know they're older established anglers and you know, they're, I feel like they've gotten complacent, you know, and they, you know, they've, they've been able to, you know, to just lean back on what they know and, and, and do decent and, and do decent. And this one, is this, is this the one you're done? Yes. And, and, you know, they've been able to lean, you know, lean back on. Oh, that. that's what a not good. Party what foul. a was empty. He caught it though. You see that? And now these. What are we, what are we gonna say? And now these this? younger guys that are coming up. Give me and the. Give me the keyboard. Embraced it. Give me the keyboard. Things. Give me the whole keyboard. Is it a bot? It, oh, of course. <laughs> Hold no, on, it's not a bot. It's it's somebody. No, no let's, leave the spelling let's, errors in there. <laughs> let's let Paul finish what he's saying. So, and, then, and then we will fully insult the bot, the bot that is trying to have sex with us. So, you know, it's a, a lot of established people. They've they've become complacent. You know they've they've been able to do the same thing, and you know some younger guys come up and they've they've figured out something new, and you know now they're behind the eight ball, yeah. Because you know the the younger guys figured out something just like they did when they came into it, when you know when KVD came into came into the Wait, field and de- what, and really developed power fishing. David Fritz, you know. When, what are we doing here? Where's oh, I am Victoria, M Victoria. <laughs> no, go. I am. So hello, M Victoria. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we are we are going. We down. are we are about to have we are about to have leave sex the spell- chat just, with just, this bot right now. Just leave the spelling errors in everything. Hold up. Can- <laughs> this is what we do on Bass and Beer Radio. I'm not even mad about it. No, that it. that's wrong, Tony. Don't do that. Well, no, it's 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 gonna get better. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Go go before disability. Go put physical. <laughs> you mean small penis? I like it. Uh, do you have a micro penis? I'm getting to that. That is a physical disability. Tony has a micro. Wait, hold on. Why does this have to be said by me? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't even right. Like this, this is signed into the Bastard Beer Radio account. And it's still signed by Chad. I'm like the retard. Well, it just it only shows to us who sends it. I know, but it's a late. Everybody else is looking at it on this. Can we look at her profile? Let's look at her. Let's let's on the internet forever now. (laughs) Let's look. Let's look at her profile. Are you sharing the screen right now? Oh yeah. Oh, everybody's looking at it right now. No, click on view profile. Yeah, view view profile. Okay, here we go. What kind of what kind of good fake pictures do we have? Oh my god. Oh, eighty six total. That is not your kid. I promise. Yeah, definitely not, (laughs) dude. 
So, like, the easiest giveaway for these bots is everyone that comments on this is totally not from the United States or any Western country ever. Oh, look at that child. That's sad. That's, that's a, someone's child. That's, that's like, his grandma. Dude, that's, dude, that's my daughter, apparently, so fuck you. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> Hold up. Look at look at Big Titties Unanimous over here in the freaking <laughs> Christ. Or Hold days. up. Hold up, dude. Her mom is dead in the what car right the now. What the fuck's going on? Look, dude, this is my... Dude, she is dead in it's the probably, passenger seat right now. It's probably it's probably a, a stolen profile versus... Oh, 100%. Dude, look at it. Hold up. 90-year-old woman. Look at this. Got a beard. You see that <laughs> shit? She's got a better beard than she you. She got a beard... Straight up. She really does got a better beard than me. That's some. I can tell you one thing. That's some good coffee. <laughs> what is what kind, is that Wawa coffee? What Wait, is that? Hold up. Oh, Where's her thing even at? Did she respond? No. Hold on. Go back to the. Wait, go back to the happening? thing. I don't know where we're go at. Go back right to the now. message. First one. First one. Yeah. Uh, hit, First the, hit in the message. Let's go. Let's talk to her. She's not in. She's not say at thirty-seven a.m. <laughs> Wait, ten fifty-nine. I'm Victoria. Twelve hours. That was later. ten minutes ago. Victoria, please respond. I'm lonely. I am lonely. <laughs> Hold up. I need a response from this. Oh, I have a home. credit card. <laughs> I have a credit card. <laughs> I love this. Please, please answer. <laughs> the typos just make it better. <laughs> I know. You know what? Eventually, this is gonna go through, and nobody's gonna be here, and I'm gonna have to deal with this, and no one's gonna be fucking here. You're gonna you're gonna get like 500 messages. That's what I'm me. saying. I'm, and every one of them's gonna be. I'm asking gonna for live stream and tell them to be like, "You guys brought me into this." Every one of them's gonna be asking you for your social security number. <laughs> Chad's gonna have about thirty Wait, new so lines like, of credit tomorrow. Can we can we somehow try to like video call this bitch? No, dude. What the <laughs> fuck? No. Probably. Welcome to Bass and Beer Radio. No, dude. I'm, I'm, dude. No, this, is it is it Pan or Pam? Victoria or Linda? I am one hundred and ten percent trying to video call this bitch right now. Go back to profile. You might be able to go. Wait, where's the profile? Do you profile, profile right? right. Germany. At the top, where it says view profile. Germany. <laughs> top right. There you go. I mean, I see like, that. So I see you work in Germany. Are you a Nazi? Video. Uh, video for more? Oh, that's more. video. I don't want to see her video. Go to go to more. Where's more? Um, to the right. Are you? <laughs> you what is your few... phone number? Go back to the messages. Go back to messages. Yeah, it's got to be in messages. It's got to be there somewhere. Yeah, that did not make that. All right, dude. Look at that. Look at that cute little kid. Well, she's not responding, and it's a quarter after eleven. We should probably. Yeah, we should probably. We should probably, <laughs> we should probably <laughs> shut this up. We'll let Chad deal with this later. <laughs> we'll find that in the morning. See you guys later. Peace out. Sweet.